do you remember that you're dreaming? Aloha, dreamers. Time to wake up. That's right. It's time for a paradigm shift dream class. Hello, my name is Brendan, and thank you so much for tuning into this. And of course, if you're listening to this in the future through the podcast, hello to you. And to everyone, this is a very special edition of Paradigm Shift Dream Class in the Whoops, as something almost breaks in the background. The magic pine cone, which it was saying hello. It's like a glass pine cone thing that I got to use better hockey tape on so it doesn't fall over. But anyways, guys, this is Paradigm Shift Dream Class, and I'm joined by several other people who are going to be able to say hello. So for everybody here in the class, let's all say hello to the people listening and the fellow dreamers out there on the Internet. So let's all say hello. Hello, hello dreamers. Hello. hello, people. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Aloha, welcome back. Good here. Cool, so we got a few people. Uh, Brianna, we got Kaya, we got Savita, Sam, and Steve-O right now. Sam actually has to go, and as a quick hello and goodbye, Sam's going to answer a question that more of us will answer within this class discussion about why it's important to be interested in studying dreams. So, Sam, I'm going to pass over to you because I know you've got to go, but, yeah, go ahead, Sam. Cool, man, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think it's really important to study dreams. I feel like uh, when we sleep and we plug into another realm and we have this network of knowledge that's out there, and when we sleep we have the ability to go in the past, go in the future, see if we're on the right path, see if the decisions we're making are helping us or hurting us. We sort of review what happens to us during the day. We review what happened to us years ago. We learn lessons that we didn't necessarily, you know, learn while we were conscious, while we were awake, you know, and learning takes place through dreams much more than it takes place, uh, you know, during the day, in my opinion, you know, so that's why I think dreaming is really, really important. Awesome, Sam. Thanks so much, man, and uh, yeah, I look forward to being able to talk more, and of course, this is Sam from havenforhumanity.org, so... Definitely. Thank you, Check Sam. That, that was yeah. so wonderful. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thanks. All right, All guys. Right. Have a great night. Enjoy your dreams. <laughs> Thanks, man. See you around. Peace awesome. out. Awesome. Cool. So, a- a- again, you know, this, this classroom is something that is created to be pretty casual. It's a place for us to be able to practice talking about our dreams. And dreams are obviously a very recurring topic within the Paradigm Shift community, which is part of the reason why we wanted to be able to get the dream class introduced. So rather than saying, oh, let's do another team hangout or another Destiny class specifically about dreaming every so often, now we actually, by having it every other week, which is what it will be, so the next one will be in two weeks from the original date of this broadcast, May 3rd, But by doing it like that, it creates a routine that creates a very interesting story that will be something that we'll be co-creating together in terms of what we're learning about dreams, but also the progress in our personal practices that we'll actually be able to share. You know, we'll be able to come back and be like, well, this is what's happened since the last time. This is like the shifts that I've been able to make within my own reality through my own habits and studies and everything related to dreams that we can talk about, which, of course, is really talking about the evolution of consciousness in many ways. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to be able to use this space as a chance to practice, like I said, practice talking about dreams, and, of course, inviting the people who are watching this to tune in and take part as well. There is the, just in terms of the basics... When you're listening to the show, always know that you can join the team live chat through the main website. Even, you know, even after the show airs, please feel free to use get in the habit of using the team live chat. Even just leave a message, leave messages and references to things you're listening to in the future, and just communicate with each other through there, and we'll be able to interact with you guys that way. And that's part of the way how this whole project is really being evolved right now. Is that you'll realize that. The website itself is a very interesting thing which we can host events through. And this online class, the dream class, is one of them. So I think dreams are interesting to study because, as Sam was referring to, they definitely teach us a lot about ourselves. And I'll get into more of it later, but what I'm going to do is actually just pass it over to whoever would like to actually go next and answer the question themselves of why are dreams important to study? Why should we be interested in studying dreams? So to whoever would like to volunteer within the class to share. 
first, and then we can talk about anything that comes up as a group as well. Um, I can volunteer. Brianna, go right ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Brianna, also known as Busy Spread Love on the Internet. Um, I think dreams are important to share or important to study specifically because they have potential. Potential for can manifest itself in a couple different ways. Um, so dreams potential can manifest itself literally through literally interpreting your dreams because um, dreams can be windows to your psyche, windows to your unconscious. So literally interpreting your dreams and seeing how they compare to your current life circumstances and maybe looking to them for help or clues to assist you on your journey. A second way is prophetic, so like the universe talking through us. Um, um, maybe you dream about something and then it comes true, that sort of thing. So maybe thinking about it in, it's important to study dreams, and I like to think about it in terms of macro and micro. So the macro is um, the dream energy, the energy surrounding dreams is the energy coming from the all, coming from the universe. So that's the macro. And then there's the dream energy that's coming from your own energy. So that's the micro. So learning how to interpret both those two different types of dream energies that can come down through your dreams is important. That's why I think it's important to study dreams. Um, I do have a dream story. Is that OK to share? Is that for later? Yeah, actually, yeah. I was going to ask if there was anything related to recent dreams that you might want to share. So. Yeah, please feel free. And again, you know, that's a good reason for using this space is for us to say and to practice having storytelling where we practice. By, by, sh by sharing our stories as dreams, it does help with our recall process, I feel. And we can talk more about that later. But yeah, Brianna, go ahead. And just for the people watching this, and again, for the people in the future, uh, you can definitely help out through the evolution of the class now that we're broadcasting live. Well, other people, well, Brianna's taking the moment here to answer. I'm just kind of going through the world of the Internet and just letting other people know that they can tune in. So a lot of people will just tune in and watch, but of course we, wanted to know, we want people to know that they are welcome to interact and to participate, and even in, if that's just in the live chat. But help out the show by simply letting people know that it is live now, and uh, yeah, that's an awesome way to just... Plant those little seeds. You never know. You post it in one group, and someone sees it, and it connects them again through the classroom. It also connects them to the bigger paradigm shift central project. So, cool. Okay, Brianna, I'm going to pass it over to you, and uh, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Brendan. Um, the dream story that I had to share connects to that macro micro that I was talking about. So I'm in college. It's my sophomore year of college, maybe like five years ago, and um, all this energy of partying and making friends and new friends and having new experiences. And I have a dream about one of my friends getting arrested for drunk driving. So I know this friend and I tell him like, hey, uh, you know, I had this dream about you. And then we go out to a party later on this that evening and he wants to drive us all back to the dorms. And I say, no, we're going to walk. So we all walk back to the dorms. And of course they all complained about walking. And I had to explain to like a group of 10 kids why we weren't going to drive because I had this dream. No one believed me. And then spring break happened, which was only like a week away. And lo and behold, the friend I had a dream about got pulled over for drunk driving. And he kind of said, you know, I should have listened to you, but I didn't. And there was all that dream energy, and I was hesitant about telling him. But the path he was on, he was already abusing alcohol. He was already you know, taking the, showing those risk behaviors. So I had to pay attention to that energy in my dream that went along with the pattern and the energy of the universe and that said, that told me, hey, this person is in trouble, let them know. So I did that part. Now whether or not they listen to you is a completely different story, <laughs> obviously. Um, but yeah, if I hadn't paid attention to it, if I hadn't, you know, listened, it could have been worse. So, you're muted, Skull. <laughs> Ta -da, there we go, sorry. Um, yeah, no, I was saying that was an awesome story. Thanks for sharing. I think it's uh, when, when we get those coincidences, those synchronicities happening through dreams, it's uh, very interesting to look back on them. So, 
Yeah, um, if I want to share more of my stories and uh, to go along with that sharing on the internet sort of thing, my uh, Snapchat is Spread Love Scott. My Instagram is Breezy Spread Love. So is my Facebook page, Breezy Spread Love. And my YouTube channel is Breezy Spread Love. You can follow more at hashtag Golden Gyne Adventure. Thanks. Stay healthy, stay light, and don't give up the fight. <laughs> Breezy out. <laughs> Are you are you actually out? Do you have to go, or was that just like your your moment there? Out. I will observe and maybe chime in a couple of times, but I want to pass the talking stick. Absolutely, here. yes. Cool. Well, thank you again, Brianna. And yeah, I know you said you have to nanny tomorrow, so yeah, definitely you'll need to <laughs> get as much sleep as you can for that. So. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Okay, well, um, moving on with the topic of dreams. Again, I want to be able to look at dreams in a variety of ways. I want us to be able to even just talk about why meditation is important as a group. Later throughout the evolution of this class, obviously this is the first class, and it's always interesting to uh, see who's able to make it out. But in the future, there are going to be some people in particular who I've actually invited from the Lucidity Festival who are involved with the the course week that they did at Lucidity this year. So this year at Lucidity it was really cool because they had various and one of them was specifically about lucid dreaming. And so there's a few people including Laura Lyon, Richard Hilton, and Thomas Pizel who we're going to be inviting on to the Hangout and I guess you can think of them as professionals, professionals in the realms of talking about dreaming and, and just through their own wisdom and experience. And Thomas has actually been on the past, Richard and Laurel and Thomas, you would actually um, be able to recognize them from the Journey to Lucidity movies, in particular in Journey to Lucidity, well, Richard in Journey to Lucidity 1 and Thomas and Laurel on the dream panel discussion scene from Journey to Lucidity 2. So cool little connections of ongoing relations there. And again, they'll be super insightful and, and stay tuned for that. Who knows? It could even happen within this episode, to be honest, if one of them tunes in. Um, sorry, guys, I just want to make sure, is my sound okay? Because I, my computer's just kind of lagging right now, and I just want to double-check to confirm. Are you guys able to... Cool. Okay. Thank you, guys. And uh, just confirming in the chat that we're sounding okay. Cool. Yeah, I uh, just kind of ran out of RAM on my computer at one point. <laughs> so, but anyways, so in relation to dreams, uh, again, I'd like to be able to just pass the talking stick around and hear from the other people in the class and, and sort of get several ideas into the middle in terms of why do we think dreams are important to study. And I will be sharing more insight on my personal just thoughts on that, and I mean, some of the basic ones, well, no, I'll, I'll hold off, but definitely, if you want more on dreams in general, I will say, go back and check out the Paradigm Shift Destiny School class that we did on dreams, which is a separate podcast, MP3 video file that you can find within the website, and of course, um, yeah, just like through the podcast feed, and go back and check that out as well, because there's a lot of original inspirational conversation there and some of the things we'll be repeating but uh, yeah this will be a nice a nice extension of some of the original ideas I were brought up in there but at the same time kind of starting fresh so with that said I want to be able to just pass the talking stick around and we have still with us Kaya and Maria and Steve-O. Uh, would either of you guys like to volunteer to share a little bit about why you think it's important for us to be interested in studying dreams? And Maria, open, yeah, go ahead. So Maria, if you would like to if you would like to share with us a little bit about why you think it's interesting to study dreams, go ahead. Sure. Um, well, it's that uh, Greek, um, uh, the uh, the Greek aphorism "Know thyself." I think that's one of the 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 biggest gifts from dreaming and and looking at dreams, recording dreams, interpreting them, applying them. Um, but there's, I mean, it's just. Uh, it's sort of become my, my, my biggest passion in life. Um, healing can happen in the dream. Soul retrieval can happen in the dream. Fragments of ourselves that were lost in trauma or 
um, during certain life experiences um, can return to us. Um, there are dream teachers. You can find yourself in you know, some dream school with mystics and sages and um, process a lot of information sort of on a, on a deeper level that is integrated without the conscious mind being involved. Um, the dream world offers inspiration. So as an artist, I like to I like to bring my dreams to life. I like to draw them. I like to paint them. Um, I like to create poetry from them. I uh, try to bring it in, however, through dancing, whatever. Um, so it's like this. It's like this primordial soup of self, and it's it's a, a way to make the unconscious conscious. So. In a way, it's it, it's it presents our whole multidimensional alchemical self, and it and it gives us this opportunity to bring it all into our waking reality. So, um, on an, as um, I think it was Brianna said, on an energetic level, um, this energy can be brought into the waking reality and then manifest. So. The dream is not just personal. I find that it's transpersonal. I may have dreams about other people, and if I feel inspired to, I share it with them, and often there's a message for them as well. And that's really amazing to, to see. But they're just the multidimensional aspects of the dream story can elucidate your issues, your gifts, um, where to go, what your next step is, um, you know, prognosticate the future, uh, warn you, let you know about what's happening in your physical body, your energetic body. So there's all of this information just ready to be tapped into. Um, and I find that there's this reciprocation with the dream world. The more that I invest in my relationship with my dreams, the more that the dream world uh, gives to me, shares with me, and invests in me. And and it's sort of like having this this um, this other relationship with myself or an other self or all myself, um, which is really great and. Uh, and and it, it allows me to um, to process what is happening in my life, um, changes that are happening, what I'm learning. It helps me to integrate um, and transform. So it's just um, uh, it's just this wonderful wealth of uh, information and juice for life. So <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome, Maria. Thank you. That's a very uh, yeah. It's 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 awesome because I mean, obviously, how long would you say have you been interested in studying dreams? Like, has it kind of just been from a young age, even? Uh, well, I'm fifty uh, something. I'm fifty one, um, and I've been recording my dreams for over twenty years. Wow. Uh, and seriously working with them for the last, I would say, ten. Um, and uh, and it's the relationship keeps changing. Like I I find that um, I'm beginning to have what seems like lucid dreams. I'm hearing a lot of auditory messages in when I'm in hypnagogia, um, and then they're like little clues. Like oh, what's that? Like this week I received um, like in hypnagogia I heard 16th century Sufi mystic. You know, and then a name, um, you know, Walid, and I'm like, what is that? Here's like a little crumb to follow, perhaps, or to contemplate. Um, so I can, or to just see what what happens in my waking reality around that message. So, yeah, it's just fascinating, fascinating, and uh, just it's it just fascinating. <laughs> just love it. Awesome. I think uh, one, one of the things that I really like about dreams is that for people who 
are either new to studying them or just been doing it for a while, it's a very exciting thing. And for someone, for myself, who's even been involved with, uh, you know, looking at things from the lens of Hollywood movies and storytelling and filmmaking and everything, I, I just love the uh, infinite potential that the dreamscape is. You know, it literally is this uh, nation of the magi, the imagination, where your thoughts do create. And and there's so much that it can teach us. And, you know, people who have tuned into the past, you would have, you, you guys know that I kind of get into this idea that part of the, at the very core, you know, if I were to just share one of my basic ideas of why I think it's important to study dreams is because it reminds us of how powerful our mind is. Not just how powerful, but, like, the idea that thoughts literally do create in themselves. So... In that idea, as you learn to create within the dream space, you become you be, you learn you become a better dreamer within this space, because you realize that they're essentially still part of the same thing. And and by thing, I just mean holographic, hyperdelic, interconnected matrix that all of this reality is. And and just keeping in mind, you know, our perception of it, obviously, we know it, it's only so small or it's only like so big in itself but like they're there I mean the dream space is a place where we open up into it I mean our basic our our baseline perception of things can be thought of as being very narrow in comparison to the scape of what we see through the dream space but not even through the other through other forms of altered consciousness you could say and the dream space again it's it's every night we tap into this infinite, this grid of infinite, infinite potential, this virtual lesson simulator of infinite potential, and tapping into some of that potential, sinking into some of that potential, uh, again goes back to what Maria says. You know, it's a, it's a whole know thyself sort of thing, and definitely as you begin to develop more interested interest within dreams, the dreams begin to shift, and they begin to, you know you may start remembering them in a different way. So there's tips and tricks in terms of how to remember your dreams better, and we will be getting into that, keeping this also as being a practical, something practical. We want to be able to have practical tips. Sorry about that. phone just went off. We, still, we want to be able to get, provide people with practical tips in terms of how to be able to remember the dreams, how to work towards lucidity, and ultimately the reason for creating this goal is so people can work towards developing the relationship with their dreams in their own way, to be encouraged courage to work towards it with the idea that in doing so more and more of us continue to become you could say more embodied cosmic citizens if you want to think about it that way in terms of just bringing more mindfulness into ourselves and dreaming is a great way to be able to also bring in ideas and concepts of discipline within to uh, daily habits and we'll talk more about that, and, and that's also, you know, related to the concepts of sexual energy and, and the ancient ideas of how that ties in within dreaming, which is definitely a very important topic, so we'll talk more about that. But other than that, we uh, still have the opportunity to pass the talking stick around and just get some more introductions. And uh, Brianna, if uh, you're heading out soon enough, feel free to jump in with a final or any new thoughts or anything. But uh, we'll um, pass the talking stick. And again, you know, for people who are watching this, please feel free to join as well. Uh, as new people join into the chat, they will definitely still get a chance to jump on board. So thank you again to the people who are tuned into this. And um, yeah, again, I'm continuing to share it. And I almost wanted those of you who were in the team building hangout last time, you guys know that I would do like a a Facebook live broadcast of the Hangout by filming my computer screen. So we might do that again, because that will at least link people into the Hangout. So <laughs> one way or another, guys, we'll uh, keep moving forward with this. So Kaya and Stevo, uh, if one of you guys want to just like volunteer to share a little bit about why you feel it's important to study dreams, or maybe just why you're interested in dreams personally. So, dun, 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 dun. I know both of you guys. Both both of you guys are new to the hangouts, um, but yeah, whoever <laughs> whoever goes, if you guys want to pass, uh, we can still keep talking. I'm sure uh, whatever you guys are. <laughs> Kaya, you had a poem. Kaya, you're muted right now. Actually, I think if you're trying to talk, go ahead, Kaya. Um. Well, I guess in terms of why, like paying attention to dreaming and stuff is important. I feel like 
Sleep in general is very important because sleep in general like gives your body a chance to like regenerate and heal and rest and everything. And so in a way that like that parallels with dreaming that it gives your subconscious a way to process things and you know it it gives you a chance to you know process things that you're not able to in the moment and um, so like a lot of information can come that way and also a lot of inspiration like I am an artist too so I, I um, my imagination runs rampant <laughs> so um, dreaming gives me a lot of um, inspiration for my writing too and um, as you said, I, I have a poem that I wrote last semester in my poetry class that was loosely based on a dream I had like 10 years ago or something. Um, loosely based, I took a lot of liberty with it, but um, if I can share that now. Um, it's, uh, it's called A Lesson in a Dream. I was running through the woods one day, wind blowing my hair back, feet sinking into, into the spongy, mossy ground, speed getting faster and faster. Finally, my body became weightless as I lifted off the ground in a graceful leap. I shot up into the sky, but as I did, I came face to face with a new adversary, the Dragon King of the Third Kingdom. With eyes like fire and wings of bright blood red, a sneer on his face, exposing his porcelain white teeth, he loomed over me, his wings beating strong. The wind pressure almost thrust me down, but it didn't. I felt new power in me, but the power wasn't mine. It was the power of the forest underneath me. It was the power of hundreds of trees with thick trunks and deep roots. It was the power of animals who will do anything to protect their home. As this power welled in me, I realized I was wrong. The power was in me the whole time. It was indeed mine. But never before had my forest home been threatened. For the forest was my home. My home was the earth. As these thoughts passed through my mind, light burst from my shoulders wings of bright fire to combat wings of blood. I felt growth at the base of my back, the tail of a cat to give me agility, and finally a gift from the forest in the form of a bow. I was now prepared to, to subdue the beast. The belly of the dragon turned orange. I knew the flames would be coming soon. Clearly the dragon didn't realize he was fighting fire with fire for I had the fire of passion in my wings. They shielded me from the flames as I loosed my first arrow. As dark as night, I heard it whiz off. As true as my passion and strength, the arrow hit its target and pierced the belly of the beast. Not his heart, no, just the jewel that gave him his power. As the jewel, as the jewel shattered, and he fell. As he fell, he transformed. His wings folded into his shoulders, and I finally saw him for who he truly was. The dragon was a figment of the dream, but the w person a wizard of my reality, the one who had been there for so many years of my life, teaching me the power of imagination. Using the world of dreaming, he had helped me defeat the dark dragon within me. This then allowed me to continue to the next lesson. With my head in the clouds and my feet on the ground, I would learn about balance in life by being a tree. Bravo! Bravo! Beautiful! Wow. That was awesome. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> That's so cool. That's really inspiring. I, 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 love, I love what you did there. Like just again, you know, just that's made for such a beautiful story. So it's 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 really inspiring to <laughs> thank you. Really great imagery. I loved all the mm -hmm. 
images and it felt like I could follow along and you were right, I really liked the dragon stuff and all the <laughs> metaphors at the end. And, yeah. Thank uh, you. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I just to finish up, I just think that dreams, dreams bring us inspiration and they help us to process things and learn new things and yeah, <laughs> that, that's my piece. <laughs> cool. I think, um, you know, as a little class assignment, we, we can move forward with the idea of having homework, so to speak. Um, but one of the things that, not to necessarily just do it right this second, but down the road, I, I would love to just encourage people to write poetry inspired by their dreams and short stories inspired by their dreams. And again, you know, I think that's an exciting part of the class. When more of us can get better at remembering our dreams that we'll actually be able to come back with stories to tell. Uh, it, it, just in reference to that, you know, there was an interesting dream that my friend had the other night uh, in which I was in it. There was actually two different people told me about um, me being in their dreams last night, and both of them were like very like very like palpable energies. Uh, they kind of reminded me as of almost like being at like festivals or something. But uh, there's one here, and I'm actually just going to read a little bit about what she said. So this is actually from my friend Lily, who uh, will be listening to this in the future. So shout out to Lily. And she's part of the local Paradigm Shift London community. And she's like told me about dreams where I've shown up in them before. But she always says that whenever I show up in her dreams, it's always kind of a very interesting energy like we're always like going on adventures or just like something like that <laughs> so um, how we show up in other people's dreams is, is a very interesting thing we can talk more about that so she says hello fellow dreamer I had an incredible dream with you in it this morning there was a crow that was white on its right side and black on its left with a little bit of white lower down on the on the black side so already there's like a there's like a yin yang crow in her dream I'm just like what? Like that's like the symbolism, right? Because again, when, when we're talking about dreams in general, there's more to this. I'll read it in a second. It's a big part of it goes back to the idea that the universe uses the language of symbols to communicate to itself, and so dreams is all about symbols. And there's so much that is kind of coming through, and whether we can interpret it and comprehend it with our regular, just like everyday mind or be able to um, but uh, even if we can't do that we'll still be receiving the inf information as symbols through like the uh, ultra conscious of our dream mind so she says I can vividly recall seeing it in a tall ancient pine tree so again pine tree mm, pine cones interesting it looked relatively normal and then it turned its head and it was so dramatic I drew your attention to it and we were so excited about it. Eventually, and then it changes, eventually we were inside an airport in some cool Arabic speaking country and we were each frantically, excitedly journaling, kind of channeling what this meant, what message the bird has brought to us. The rest is not easily described, but those were the important parts. So, um, yeah, like that was a, again, being able to draw on the symbolism of a yin yang like a yin yang crow I, I feel uh, just by being able to for me being able to look up more about what crow teachings are about like that that could be part of the reason for the dream you know because of that I'll like go and learn more about the crow teachings and stuff like that because I think every animal has something to teach us about the yin yang of life so to speak but anyways um, so that was just a quick example of a story uh, related to dreams. If anybody else does have any dream stories that they want to share at any point, please feel free. We're kind of on a loose schedule uh, in terms of the routine for the class, but we can definitely end it with meditation. And again, just inviting people who may want to be able to tune in to tune in. There's enough room for up to 10 people in the Google Hangouts. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to being able to get more people in here and be able to continue to brainstorm and see why what we can explore and when it comes to dreams that's like the exciting part so I want to be able to give you guys some more practical tips on how to be able to remember your dreams better and everything related to that but I also want to be able to just pass a talking stick off now so in relation to dreams uh, we still uh, have Sivo who um, 
if Steve-O would like to say anything. So, Steve-O, is there anything that you would like to, to say at this moment related to maybe why, should we, why we should be interested in dreams or anything, really? I could say something. Am I coming through? Cool. Loud and uh, it, when you're leaning into it, 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 it does help a little bit, but yes, it's still quite low, so every bit helps. I don't know. Go ahead. I think they are important because they're definitely uh, uh, a method of uh, the way the universe will give information to us. Uh, just as important, you know, as uh, you can sometimes get get a message through just just through meditation. I personally myself, I don't dream that I'm aware of. I'm not many dreams that I remember, so I'm really not much of a sharing any dream stories. Um, I am interested in trying to lucid dream, but uh, my ego keeps getting in the way and it's not going to be out of the way. That's about all I can really say. And love everyone. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Sure. Cool. Well, thanks, Stevo. And again, you know, um, with with dreams, it's always really interesting because some people have different levels of like how they dream to begin with, and uh, some people, even without a regimented or like a, a regular practice, are still able to recall their dreams on the regular. But for the majority of people, it would seem. Um, our ability to recall dreams is, is very delicately affected. Uh, I, I was wondering, though, um, Maria, if there was uh, anything that you wanted to share, just we can get into the topics of uh, why or how people would be able to remember their dreams better, or any practical tips that you might want to share, and then we'll get into some other stuff soon as well. Sure. Um, I think intention is really important, and um, just to be prepared, so... Um, make sure you have a, a notepad or a voice recorder by the bed um, so that you're basically telling the universe, okay, I'm ready to document when they arrive. Um, and, and that's one way um, to sort of get the ball rolling. I think the next thing is to um, wake, try to wake up as gently as possible uh, like a really jarring wake-up call is not a good idea. Um, but even if that happens, um, to try to remain in that liminal state between, um, between sleep and full wakefulness, um, because what can happen is if you just stay there in that and then try to um, stop, don't think about the day, don't think about what's coming, just just rest in that space, what can often happen is that the dream um, details start to come back to you. And, um, and I find that, um, and so that's just like closing your eyes, being as still as possible, um, you know, avoiding, you know, extraneous thought, and just relaxing. And again, holding, holding a bit of a space for, for the dreams to, to, to come back. Um, what I find that um, can also happen is that even if um, I don't remember my dreams when I wake up, um, I, they may come to me throughout the day. So I think the fact that I want to remember my dreams, I, I, I plan all of this, I create the space in the morning or when I wake up, even if it's the middle of the night, um, that that somehow it's like the dream will reach out to me in, in waking reality and I might have a synchronicity, something that happens in my waking reality, it's like, oh yeah, my dream, that's it, thank you, right? Um, so I find um, just, just holding that space and that intention. And um, the other thing that I sometimes do is because sometimes I have a, a prolific night, you know, five dreams, seven dreams. Um, what I will do is I will attach one word to each of those dreams. 
um, you know, car, uh, coffee shop, you know, person's name, uh, jungle, cat, whatever. And just by having those, those, I may not have all of the details, but if I, if I, if I latch on to one word um, related to the dream, when I go to write them down, the details will often come back to me. So, so I think a lot of it is just creating the space for it, recording them um, as soon as you get up. Um, also, I think retelling dreams. Um, if you have someone you can share your dream with in the morning, that telling of the dream will help you to recall the dream longer. So um, I may have a dream from yesterday that I did not write down, but because I told someone about it, it's still there. So those are just some of my tips. Awesome. Thank you, Maria. Yeah, those are, you're right, those are some great tips. And, and again, you know, I think that's the exciting thing within this class, too, is uh, it, it gives us a reason to practice sharing our dreams when we can just do it as a class in this way. So, um, sorry guys, I'm just kind of multitasking at the same time right now to see if I can actually launch um, a Facebook live broadcast feed of this feed, which will just kind of give another boost into the internet world so people can get a chance to see this, uh, at least a part of it. Uh, but again, I want to be able to uh, just uh, reiterate like what Maria was saying, where w when definitely, like, dreams in that space where you're just, uh, when you're just waking up in the morning, definitely be like a soft, be, be very soft when you're getting up because it's almost, um, wow, okay, my iPad is just completely glitched out right now. It does this sometimes. But anyways, I'll see if we can get that working later. But regardless, the important thing is we're recording now, and that's awesome. But what I was going to say is um, definitely, like, within that, within that space, it's almost as if the... Uh, um, like it, it also is a chemical thing, uh, and, and I feel that definitely when you get up out of bed and you just even go to the bathroom or you even just get your feet on the floor, that it just kind of like flushes out the not so much the memory of the dream, but the connection to the memory of the dream that is kind of created through uh, a neural bridge, which actually gets into some very interesting or something similar to a portal, where it gets very interesting because that's. Um, for myself, one of the things that's really interesting and exciting about dreams and dreaming is the correlation between dreams, birth, death, and uh, the topic of the pineal gland and DMT and everything like that, and, and the logicalness of terms of like how they can all link together. So, cool. Welcome to the Hangout, Zach, and uh, we'll uh, get you to jump in. You can do a, if you want, actually. We just got a few people joining in. So, um, Zach, go ahead. You can unmute yourself and just do a microphone check if you would like to do that. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome to the Hangout, Zach. Um, hey. <laughs> And uh, again, you know, just reminding people that as the class does continue to broadcast live, please, please feel free to join, whether you're maybe new to dreaming or whether you've been studying dreams for quite a while. And another thing, I do want to give a shout-out to the people in the live chat who are participating there, and a reminder to actually ask questions within the live chat. So encouraging you guys, if you have any questions, if you have any expansions on ideas that we're talking about here, please feel free to leave those into the live chat. And again, that's the team live chat through the main website. So yeah, keeping an eye on that. But uh, yeah, getting into the, uh, the topic of dreams and everything, I'll pass it over to someone else. Um, what are some other practical tips we can talk about in terms of ways to either perhaps remember dreams better or just to be able to engage with our dreams or to become more aware and more mindful and conscious of our dreams, essentially. And if anybody else wants to jump in on that, go ahead. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure. Brianna, is Brianna still there? Maybe? Cool. Anyways, um, we can pass it over to Zach since uh, he's new in the class and stuff. But Zach, we were asking everyone earlier as to why people feel we should be interested in learning dream, learning more about dreams and studying dreams. Do you? Uh, would you like to share a bit of your thoughts on that practice sharing? Um, sure. Um, cool. Okay. Well, Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I feel like it's sort of a can be a direct connection to 
um, source, I guess. Um, and you can get information, um, messages from your higher self, maybe, um, you know, directly through dreams. <clears throat> In addition to just, you know, kind of processing your daily day-to-day -day activities and all that. I actually haven't really been able to remember my dreams very well. Like for years, I usually don't remember my dreams, so I'm trying to get a better, uh, you know, get more <laughs> in touch with them and, and uh, be able to remember them after I have them. Awesome. Well, definitely. Like, it's. I'm. I'm glad you're able to find the the class and the hangout, and we'll be doing that. We'll be exploring more ideas, and, and uh, again, get, bring this into the practical concept. So, you know, for people who are even listening to the show, you're definitely still a part of the class. And as we go through it, you'll get some more ideas of how you can integrate practices into your own, sorry, habits into your own practice, and to be able to notice the results, especially for people who are in a place where they may not be remembering their dreams because obviously when you're moving from that point forward you'll definitely be able to experience uh, the difference in everything. So in terms of uh, some of the things that I've talked about before about ways of, uh, sorry, things that will affect the way that we remember our dreams. Some of the obvious ones that we just want to be aware of are diet. Diet can affect our dreams and just in terms of like if we're eating a meal before going to bed, that's always something to be mindful of. If you eat a big meal, then your body's going to be digesting the food, moving through your stomach, and it won't have that subtle acute awareness that it can attune to the uh, dreams as it normally would be able to if it wasn't full of food. So diet is a um, just one thing to be aware of. <clears throat> another thing is also just working with uh, cannabis is another thing that a lot of people can uh, get. It's just another way that people can experience how that will actually be able to affect dream recall. Oftentimes, if people are working with cannabis, then they'll notice that they will not be able to remember their dreams as much. So it's kind of an interesting toss-up. And again, that for some people can go hand-in-hand -hand with a, a development of willpower within uh, one's lifestyle changes and lifestyle choices of just incorporating more mindfulness for the intention of being able to remember your dreams. So I mean, I think cannabis is becoming a more and more common thing, but nobody's really talking about the idea of how it affects our dream recall uh, too much, even though people do seem to experience it. So for some people, again, you know, without smoking within a day, they'll notice that they'll be able to remember their dreams far more. So keep that in mind if that is something within your practice, is that if you have the intention of remembering your dreams, just be aware that if you're working with cannabis that it most likely will affect it. So that is another thing. And um, the third thing on a short list at this point would also be the sexual energy. So again, the sexual energy kind of has like a taboo to it and not a lot of people talk, to about, talk about it, but in males specifically from my own personal experience that I can account for and I'm aware of, definitely through the cultivation of the sexual energy basically just refraining from ejaculating, refraining from spilling your seed, the seminal fluid, refraining from doing that allows you to actually cultivate that energy and that energy, as more people are becoming aware of, is an incredibly potent source for what you could say of just like spiritual lubricant, so to speak, is kind of like the term that I would think of. Like as it gains, in as, as you cultivate within your own body, it can be sent throughout your body and in particular into like up the spine so especially thinking about it from down from the root up through the spine and around and up into the mind and into, into the brain and that is like a interesting thing that you can even bring into breathing exercises and we can practice more about that so you know right off the bat for people who are interested in remembering their dreams and studying their dreams yes acknowledge that there is a level of willpower and discipline and vigilance involved with it if you're just just looking to, again, get like those 
we'll, we'll talk about it more later, but again, when you talk about the potential of dreams, when you get into the idea of ma becoming more mindful within your dreams, you get into the idea of like consistent lucidity, and we'll talk more about like what lucidity is specifically just as a refresh, and basically from there you get into very interesting concepts of accessing parts of the universe that you kind of have to, uh, again, almost like earn your way up to, so to speak, in terms of experiences. So if you want to, you know, teleport to the pyramids of Egypt, sit on top of it, and have a discussion with, like, some ascended master teacher or something, one of the ways to do that is by becoming lucid within a dream and becoming conscious within the dream state and manifesting that. So, again, dreams are a very potent space, and I'll talk a little bit more about some ideas of just understanding what the dream space is as well, because I feel when you actually sort of shift your paradigm of understanding what dreams are in, in your own understanding, but I'll share my own, then that can be a, a, a very um, relevant way of just incorporating that into your own practice. It will just bring more of a more of a coherence into understanding what it is you're doing so, mm -hmm. and why you're doing certain things. So again, going back to uh, working with cannabis being one thing, diet, and also sexual energy. And we can talk any more about any of those topics. And again, if anybody has any questions in the live chat, please feel free to leave those as well. Um, I was going to say, Brianna, it looked like you were opening your mic. Does, was there anything else that you wanted to share? Yeah, I wanted to add a couple tips I had been thinking about while listening to a couple people. Um, one thing that jumped out at me, we probably talked about this on length, that sleep is important, because obviously we're talking about dreams, so sleep is important. However, um, probably putting yourself on a regular sleep schedule might help uh, create that space um, and create a pattern for your body to fall into, so it'll help you fall asleep faster, um, get into that zen state faster. So creating a regular sleep schedule. Um, meditation beforehand, that's obvious. Uh, journaling. But I wanted to specifically say that sketching in your journals can help when you're trying to remember and recall scenes, recall details, sketching. And then while you're journaling, circle common words when we go back and we reread and revisit those old dreams. Try and see if you can circle common words or common themes and see if that's trying to tell you a story right now. Um, those are just a couple quick tips. I wanted to leave you guys with before I went off to my own dreamland, went before I take off to the astral realms and cultivate my own spaces. So thank you for having me this evening and it was lovely meeting all of you and seeing some new faces. Um, I've been in this circle of paradigm shift for a couple years now and it's great to see how much it's evolved and how much it's grown and new faces and all the warm feels. Mm -hmm. yeah. so thank you so much again for having me and I hope to do this again in the future. So. Awesome. Yeah, thanks again, Brianna. And uh, a couple of years, a.k.a. almost five years now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel old. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, Brianna, well, thanks again for taking the time to be here. And, uh, yeah, I was going to say, though, before you leave... My pleasure. Um, before you leave, just uh, take another look at the poster for this episode, and you'll notice that it's the image of the uh, paradigm shift sigil floating above a tree, kind of in a field. For anyone listening to this, and we'll talk more about this later, but I just want to mention to Priyana before she leaves so she has the idea, we're yeah. going to work towards the concept of us meeting up within the dream space. So mm -hmm. that visual imagery of a tree with the paradigm shift sigil floating above it is something of like what you can imagine for where we'll meet and then we'll meet under the tree. So I mentioned it in the last broadcast that we did in the team building hangout and to actually have a visual image of it I think is very interesting. So we'll explain yeah, more about no, that I'm later. Looking but at it right now. Yeah, so imagine that within your like imagination and then within your dream space if you become lucid you can be like the tree, and then you could like teleport there. And yeah. And that's the idea is that more of us will teleport there, and we'll be able to meet up. So. All right, I'll see you there cool. then. See Sounds you guys awesome. there. See you at the tree. Cool. See All right. Talk to you later, Brianna. See ya. Really out. <laughs> <laughs> Officially. Cool.
Officially, cool. And uh, again, for anyone looking to connect with Brianna and anybody who uh, is sharing links through the show and talking on the show, you can find it in the show notes for this episode, which is through the main website of ParadigmShiftCentral.com. And uh, if anybody uh, of you guys who are also in this class right now, if you guys want to share your profiles into the chat on the side, please feel free to do that. And I'll add those to the show notes as we keep going. So, cool. Awesome. Um, again, just going back to the live chat, uh, we don't have any questions in there yet, but if you guys do have any comments or questions, please feel free to, la- please feel free to leave them. We definitely want to be able to encourage interaction through these classes as a habit. So that's a really exciting thing that to see to what we'll be able to see evolve is again just as the classes evolve and more people get into the routine of doing these and the audience continues to grow it'll be neat to uh, continue to just engage with our engage with each other as a team through the various platforms that we have integrated within the website the various tools including the live chat so cool okay guys um, thanks again I was uh, trying to see if we could set this up for a live broadcast off of the uh, Facebook, but I'm actually just going to try one more time because it seems like it may be working. And then I was just going to get into some other stuff about dreams, but before I do that, I just want to open up the uh, talking circle. Does anybody else have anything that they would like to share related to dreams? And honestly, just keeping it open to anything that you might want to share. Tips, tricks, personal experiences, anything really. And shout out to Sherman. Hey man, good to see you. Yo, are you, uh, your mic's not very close to you, is it? Or is that? Cool. I was just going to say, if you want to, like, test your mic, please feel free. Hey, guys. What's up? Yo. Cool, man. Um, awesome. Yeah, your mic isn't, like, super loud. So we'll uh, make sure that, and I know you don't got headphones. But we can make it work. So. But yeah, just talk close to your mic. So cool. Okay. Um. I'll. Okay. Yeah. I just project. I'm just gonna mute your mic. Sorry. I was gonna just. Act, there we go. Okay. Perfect. Um. I was just gonna say, opening up the talking circle to anybody who would like to jump in at this point. Uh. Just on. Again, any general thoughts about dreams or anything related to dreams? And I know some of us are more, like, I know, again, Maria, she's been, as someone who's been writing down her dreams for 20 years, I think that's a very exciting and interesting thing. So, Maria, please, if you do have anything you want to share, feel free to jump in. And it doesn't look like my iPad's working, so. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to um, add something. Um, Brazy uh, was talking about circling certain words that keep recurring. So, um, what I what I was doing initially when I when I started to record my dreams and take a look at them and interpret them was I was looking at other other books out there, you know, dream dictionaries, that sort of thing. And um, it's um, I think it's really important to not necessarily take them too seriously. Um, our symbols are are meaningful to us in different ways. Uh, you may be deathly afraid of snakes, and I may love them. So, a meaning of a snake in a dream um, would be completely different for you or for me. So, um, I would say take them with a grain of salt, but really to just look at the stories themselves. And look at them from you know multi-dimensional perspectives. Look at look at it literally. Look at the dream literally. Look at the dream from a metaphoric perspective. Um, and um, I find actually sometimes I can be too close to my dream, um, especially if my dream is trying to show me some unconscious pattern that is sort of limiting or um, keeping me stuck. And so sharing that dream with someone else and saying, you know, if this was your dream, what would this mean to you or what associations come up? And oftentimes um, in those cases, in those particular cases, there will be like this clarity um, from the other person. And it doesn't necessarily, I don't have to, 
I don't have to own that, but if it resonates, you know, trust myself, does it resonate with me? And then look at it. Um, so I find that particularly helpful for certain dreams, definitely. Um, and I have, I have like, my partner's really great at um, bouncing dreams off of. He's just so, he's, um, he's a critical thinker and he's, he's very logical and rational. So it's, he's very different from me in some ways. I'm a little more of an abstract thinker. So um, I, just, I just find that helpful to get a sort of a, a varied perspective on a dream. Um, but then again, not that you're taking on what the other person says. Just the same as you're not reading a book and saying, yes, that's what my dream means. Because we're much more complex than that. So, yep. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Studying, uh, again, yeah, like you were saying, being able to study the dreams is, uh, the, st the symbolism within the dreams is a very interesting thing because eventually as you start writing down your dreams, you'll you'll sort of develop your, your own understanding of what the symbols mean through recurring patterns and you'll begin to decode the language of your own dreams, very literally. And I, I think it's, you know, when it comes to symbolism within dreams, uh, I was just thinking what you were saying about how it's a very subjective thing and just as an example of that and I just kind of want to share this because it kind of shifted my paradigm a few weeks ago or however long ago but just like the concept of spiders and, and what they actually sort of represent as a, again a, a teaching we were talking about sort of the teachings in the animal totems earlier when we mentioned the crow uh, when it comes to spiders I'll just put this out there as an example um, you know a lot of people would be like oh like spiders are a super spooky scary gross thing and I don't want to have any you know relationship with them or something like that, where obviously other people are just like, you know what, like spiders are super cool and stuff, but in particular, when you look at the spider of what it kind of is a reflection of in terms of the bigger pictures of reality, it is very interesting, the fact that it's, the, visually, it kind of has this whole like as above, so below thing kind of going when you look at it, even when you're looking at like the uh, Spider-Man logo, if you take a look at the Spider-Man logo, it's kind of got like... The, it looks like an infinity sign. The body would almost be like an infinity sign or just a circle, and then it's kind of got legs going up and legs going down. So it's kind of the roots of the tree going up and the roots of the tree going down. So, And then the whole web thing uh, in itself is a very interesting idea. Is like reminding us of... It's like in this, this web that literally does exist on an energetic level and it's kind of dancing along it and building upon it and everything like that. So very visually having that, that web and even like the, again, sort of concepts of like Idra's web and uh, just, yeah, that interconnectedness. But I think spiders, just as an example, are super interesting things. So, hey, if anybody has a dream about spiders, then don't be, uh, yeah, don't be so quick to just kind of encouraging everyone to look into deeper into the symbolism but definitely being able to think for yourself and you know what I've mentioned this before but if you're kinda not even too sure about what a dream meant symbolically sometimes the important thing is to just think about the way how it made you feel so if you can write down as Maria was saying just a single word for a dream you can use that as kind of a portal or a jump point to be able to remember more about that dream in detail later. So there's a, a lot of interesting stuff within the previous Destiny class that we did um, where we talked about some of the concepts of like dream memory and everything and, and I can go over a little bit more of that as well but um, again just kind of passing over the microphone to anybody else who wants to jump in and uh, again checking in with the live chat. If you guys have any questions there, please feel free to leave them as well. But uh, yeah, does anybody else want to share anything related to practical dream practices or what you felt you have, you've been learning from dreams? Because I mean, that is like the interesting question that ultimately I'm kind of just getting towards is, again, like what do dreams teach us about reality? And uh, just kind of delving into the metaphysics of that, you know, the fact that dreams are a thing. What does that teach us about reality? Like, what is the dream space in itself, or what are some best guesses on it? Because I mean, scientists will say, "Oh, you know, it's just in your head. It's just recycled information." But is it? Is it? Is there more to it? And I think through direct experience, like that question becomes very ripe. So um, again, just kind of opening up the talking stick for anybody who would want to share anything that they might want to share at this moment related to dreams. 
Um, otherwise, I can definitely go into some other stuff. But uh, Rita, um, obviously, with your experience on dreams, um, just kind of feel free to help, like with you know, moving the conversation in any way that you would feel is beneficial. But yeah, definitely keeping it open to everyone. And I know that you guys are fairly, in some cases, new to the study of dreams, so it's definitely good to just be able to listen. Um, but does anybody else just want to say some stuff for a little bit, and I'll just take a break, but then I'll have some more things that I'd be interested in sharing. And, you know, if and I do think, actually, um, let's see if... Uh, it might be another person who's actually joining. But again, if anybody wants to jump in at this point, please feel free. Hey, guys. Can you Yo, guys hear me? Yeah, Sherman, that's pretty good. And, and just kind of talk loud, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, oh, so two things. Perfect. Awesome. What's up, everybody? Um, Brendan, I had a little trouble finding this. Uh, the original link took me to the website, and then through the website, I was in the chat and had to find the link through the chat. Just a quick FYI. Maybe it was just me. But, um, yeah. Uh, that was one. Two. So, for those of us who may not necessarily dream, I know that's kind of a silly thing because we all dream, but um, not really. Like, not really a normal thing. Um, I just know for me, at least, I, uh, I have a set, like, I guess, um, I said group of thoughts, I think, when I just want to fall asleep and not dream. But outside of that, I just really don't, and maybe because they're not as vivid, but um, I just really, I feel like I don't dream. Like when I go to sleep, there'll just be nights where, you know, I go to sleep and I wake up, or there'll be nights when I just think about things deliberately, you know, not like just letting my mind wander, but uh, just think about things deliberately before, you know, I just fade off into sleep and wake up the next morning. And I don't know, I kind of feel like I'm missing out somewhere. <laughs> I know that might sound a little silly, but um, any suggestions? Oh, that was it. <laughs> cool, awesome. Thanks, Sherman. It's, uh, yeah, it's good to see you in here, man. And definitely, um, in terms of, like, the question, I guess you're basically just kind of looking for tips on being able to remember your dreams. I imagine so. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, and yeah, and just in reference, going back to TechWise, uh, with you're saying, like, with the joining the Hangouts for this one and future ones, you guys will be able to, again, follow, like, the link which takes you to the main page within the Paradigm Central website. And then underneath the YouTube videos, there's a button that says to join now. So um, if that button didn't show up, just let me know. But otherwise, there's that. And yeah, I do have the link posted into the chat as well, but um, yeah, I'm going to actually double check that to make sure that that was working fine, but presumably people are able to join. Um, so I mean, yeah, like in terms of the recall and uh, the memory stuff, uh, that's definitely going to be an ongoing thing, and I want people to be able to just like Keep in, keep it basic. Keep in mind like some of the basic stuff, and one of the other things that is just valuable is like the practice of meditation, and even just doing um, like a mental exercise before going to sleep related to recall. So one way that you can actually just kind of wind yourself down at the end of the night, and also to develop as a meditation practice, is to basically. Sorry, I'm just kind of looking for one thing right here. Okay, there we go, perfect. It's to do a reflection on everything that you did during the day. So basically, yeah, okay. No, that Hangout link is fine. Yeah, I was just doing a tech issue from in the background, but yeah, okay, so that Join button does work. Cool. Um, so yeah, before you go to bed at night, do a reflection on everything that you did that day. Try your hardest to remember as much as you can about everything that you did that day from like the moment you got into bed to like right before it. So even if it's just like lying there and it's just like, okay, I brushed my teeth and then I like had a light snack and then I did this. And you see how far back you can actually go. And through that practice of recollection within your waking state, it will naturally lead over into being able to remember your dreams a little bit better. So that I would say is, uh, is, is one way, but definitely um, within the dreaming practice, uh, I don't know maybe 
if um, if Sherman, if you're getting up right away, we were talking about, Maria had mentioned how it's important to ha like stay very still when you wake up because as soon as you move your body physically, it kind of flushes out the chemicals and then it sort of disconnects the opportunity to be able to connect to the dream memory. And, and this goes into the idea that there's almost like two clouds. There's like a waking state memory and a dream memory. And it's not that when we don't remember, it's that the dreams are gone or that we didn't dream at all. It's just that we don't have that direct connection to that dream memory, it seems. And part of the way how we want to be able to remember them is to actually like re-encode our dream memory into our waking memory. And the way how we do that is by creating a new, a new interpreted memory of it through practices such as writing down our dreams. So like that's kind of like the interesting thing is that when you when you do have a dream that you can remember, it's simply by like beginning to write it down, it begins to crystallize that otherwise kind of transient dream memory into an interpreted physical memory that, again, allows you to sort of reflect back into your dreams as you continue to just like develop awareness that way. But yeah, having the intention to remember your dreams, as simple as that sounds, is important, and Maria had mentioned that as well, and definitely having uh, a... a sorry, a pen and paper next to your bed when you go to sleep at night and having that ready. So again, you know, you could wake up in the middle of the night and you could practice writing. Like you, like that that in itself is, um, but sorry, I was just saying, having the pen and paper close to your bed is what makes it easy. So you don't have to get it out of bed. You just literally reach over and have it there and even practice writing with your eyes closed is one thing that you can do. Maybe if you wake up during the middle of the night and you have a dream that you can remember, just knowing that the pen and paper is there is going to, in some ways, like help evoke uh, a little bit of the universe kind of... Because, again, it, it's a very interesting thing. I, there's almost a very metaphysical concept going on where it's a uh, it, it's not the it, it's an esoteric science and it's not something that people can directly measure but it's something that has to be personally experienced and part of the experience is recognizing that there's like a reaction between us intentionally giving attention to our dreams and the way how the dreams actually begin to shift and so simply by having that intention to remember your dreams the universe will begin to acknowledge that and maybe that in itself will start to bring more of a ongoing connection with our dreams, um, but Sherman, just uh, how how was that? Does that does that give you some ideas and stuff, or any thoughts on that? Feel free to share. You're just muted right now. I'm not sure if you're just unmuting yourself, or I guess you are. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. That that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Awesome. No problem, man. Yeah. So uh, again, you know, just having the pen and paper super important, but the recall practice at the end of the day. So practice, you know, and again, you can practice remembering details about little things, and then it, it, it's it's flexing a muscle. And again, I'm not honestly, I'm not saying I'm the best at it. Like lately, I haven't been writing down my dreams as well as I could be, and I've even observed myself doing that, where I was just like, wow, it's like that was like. A pretty neat dream. There's no way I could forget that, and I just like didn't write it down, and then I forgot it by like noon. But uh, being able to observe that uh, again was interesting. Um, I was gonna say like within my personal practice, and I'll just share with you guys like ongoing progress between this class and the next class. Right now, and uh, you know, again, just encouraging people to f be open to like sharing their own progress and everything like that as this class develops. But right now, like my dream recall isn't the best. Uh, I, I, I can be getting better at writing down my dreams. A big part of it, I, actually, I feel, is that right now I'm in the process of also, like, cleaning my room. And I feel that once I clean my room, it will sort of give me a space to be more, like, cleaned within my own mind state and, and be in that place where I'm, like, ready to dedicate more focus towards uh, dream practice as well. Um, <clears throat> and so part of, uh, you know, just within the context of this broadcast is that... I have noticed uh, recently if there are days where I like haven't worked with cannabis that it's uh, noticeable that I'll be able to remember my dreams and for me like when I don't when I when I don't use it it's pretty obvious and, and it comes in within like just 
within 24 or 48 hours. So that's something that I'll be working with within my own practice is like understanding that hey, I can either choose to work with cannabis or I can cho- and ha- and like get an experience in that present moment and sometimes and again, you know, oftentimes like that's a whole other conversation working mindfully with with uh, cannabis, but I feel we'll get there when we get there. But again, um, knowing just like with uh, with the idea that I can either quote unquote like get high within this reality, or I can qu- or I can like definitely get high within my dreams quote unquote through an epic visceral experience that would be comparable to like a Hollywood movie. But again, part of what makes dreaming so interesting is because it does test our willpower. It does test. Uh, it makes us ask like what is important to you like do you want that instant gratification of the material existence which you can so easily access through cannabis and through uh, you know like sexual release and orgasm and everything or do you want to be able to see like what's hidden further down the trail but part of the way how to get there is by uh, again like shifting those patterns so for me uh, in terms of energy cultivation uh, I haven't done anything since I've been back since uh, from California so almost two weeks now give or take um, not even really keeping track too much but my intention is to again like cultivate my sexual energy uh, to do that past 21 days and I noticed that it's with after the 21 days that uh, it, it, it you, you do notice like things you do notice like the shift within uh, your dream space and also your meditation is affected and being able to drop into like meditation and practice visualizing things is something I actually want to use this class for uh, where we'll do group meditations and group imagination exercises as well and we'll imagine ourselves like around the field uh, within uh, what we were talking about earlier, uh, just as context, uh, you see the poster here for the dream class, uh, Sherman, we were just talking about how the tree there and the paradigm shift sigil floating above it is actually a visual reference to a place within the dream space that we're going to collectively imagine and practice w- like meeting up at. But before we even get into the dream space, we'll practice like meditating on it here and now and just kind of like bringing that into a visualization as well. Um, we'll explore that uh, to a degree within this class, but we'll get into it more within future classes as well. Um, so again, you know, with my own practice right now, like, hey, I got the, you know, sexual energy, I still got cultivated. Uh, all I have to do is like switch up a few other things and I'll be remembering my dreams pretty potently. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do what I can to share uh, to create dream logs and quest journals about my dreams when it's appropriate, though obviously like I won't do it with everyone. But I do find that oftentimes through my dreams I do uh, feel that part of our duty is also being like an ambassador. So sometimes source consciousness or just like higher consciousness, whatever you want to call it, the universe, will pass on a message to us in our dream. And then if we create a quest journal about that, any of us within the Paradigm to Central website, it, it sort of gives us a chance to like be an ambassador for that message. So every time you go to sleep, you can almost think of yourself as like a fisherman, kind of similar to how Terrence McKenna talks about psychedelics and how he says that, you know, your job is to like kind of go there into the experience and, and bring back like some fish, some ideas, bring back like thoughts and concepts or just like words of inspiration. So every night you you go to dream, you do have the opportunity to kind of be a messenger for source consciousness or, you know, our our collective evolution. And and I want us to know that through this community, that's totally encouraged. So if you guys do have any dreams that you have in the future that you want to make into dream logs, know that you can write them and, you know, you can create like an image to go with it. You don't have to, but I definitely encourage you guys to practice videotaping them. And you guys know that that's something that I've done in the past. And even that in itself is a very good way to develop your recall. And as as Maria was saying, through that practice of storytelling, uh, it helps us develop the memory. And so, you can do it through the classes, you can do it through the videos, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an exciting way for us to be able to document not only like what's happening within this physical existence, dimension, but also like what we literally are experiencing within the dream space and within the astral planes and what's actually happening there. Because, you know, what we see within our waking state is literally only a fraction of 
what the bigger story is, so to speak. And and a part of the bigger story, I feel personally, is definitely what we get up to within the, the dream space. So that's part of this idea is that we have meetings here within the physical, but then we're actually going to be able to just kind of expand this dream dream class into the dream. So cool. And we'll get more into that as we go. Um, again, just kind of passing this around. Uh, if anybody else wants to jump in, any thoughts and comments on that stuff or what you guys might have to... If you guys want to share like any of your personal current... Pro, like where you're at dream-wise and where you might plan on being at, anything like that. Um, Maria, I see you're unmuted, so if you'd like to share, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to pick up uh, where you left off. You were talking about your room and needing to tidy it up and creating some energetic space and physical space for, for the dreams to happen. And um, I, I, I just thought it, it's very much like set and setting. Um, you know, your environment, your physical environment, your mindset, your emotional um, state of being. If, if you can prepare um, the self in all of these different ways. So, so ensure your environment is, is ready for that. Have, have all the dream recording tools there. Clean the space like you, like you mentioned. Um, also, even... I've done this where um, I've written on a little piece of paper, I'm going to recall my dreams and stick it under my pillow or in my pillowcase and under my head. So in a way, I mean, it's 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 sort of symbolic. It, so it's like a symbolic gesture to the dream world that I'm inviting this. Um, and also um, maybe even emotionally, like be be psyched up. Like tonight may be the night. You know, I'm going to I'm going to start recalling my dreams, but also to recognize that just like meditation, there's there's this undulation. Sometimes you're in the zone, sometimes you're not. Sometimes the dreams are just you're flooded with them over a period of time and then you may have some dry spells. So just be aware that, you know, it's just like life. <laughs> Um, and it's just like meditation. So, um, but to know that um, the dream messengers in the dream world is always there, and it's it's excited to have that reciprocal relationship. And so, um, to not really give up if um, if you really want this to happen. Cool, awesome. Thanks, thanks again for sharing, Maria. Was there was there more that you want to share there? No, I think that was it. That was it. Okay, cool, cool, awesome. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little thing here. So we're actually broadcasting through the Facebook feed right now. So this is just kind of like a bonus way to record. And if I get this set up properly, um, in some way or another, it'll be able to manage. But anyways, I'm just going to unplug my thing so that they can hear you guys as well in the future. But what I was going to say, you know, in relation to dreams, uh, I think it's very important to understand, like, why we should be interested in studying dreams. And through studying dreams, we understand more about this reality, more about our place within it, and more about our potential to manifest and to co-create. And I think, again, that's part of the idea is that we want to become better dreamers within our individual dreams, but also within this collective dream. So I'm just going to take a moment here to, in some way, uh, I explain a little bit about like what I feel the dream space is, so to speak. Um, so basically, what I feel the dream space what I feel the dream space is, is more or less, the dream space is closer to where we are actually from before we are born. And it is a place that we go to afterwards when we die. And this is a very interesting, uh, a, a, it points to this when we hear about people who talk about being able to communicate with loved ones who have passed on within their dreams. Well, like, why is that? You know, like some people say, oh, it's just in their mind and stuff. But again, when you're looking at it from a more hyperdelic perspective and seeing it 
from the idea that the dream space isn't just this individual world created within our mind because of our memories and our brain and how things work and it's a uh, an epiphenomenon but more or less because that is what actually began first. Like that is actually the place where consciousness originated from. And then it was only over quote unquote time, so to speak, that it crystallized into this physical dimension and created these ve these vehicles and these bodies that we call you know human form. And obviously, you know, human isn't just human. Human hues of mana is anything. So um, you know, do animals dream and stuff like that? That's a whole other topic. I'd love to be able to get into. But uh, what I was just sort of getting to within this idea is understanding more about the fact that we are multidimensional beings by nature, and our multidimensionalness is something that we can explore through our dreams, and, and we realize that, like yes, like within our dream space we can see so much of ourselves. It is, it is a virtual reality simulator. It is literally responding to imagination. And so there's a lot of times where we'll be dreaming where we won't know that we're dreaming. But when we become lucid, when we know that we are, when we consciously become aware of we're dreaming it within a dream, then it gives us the chance to play around with the the elements of the dream space which reflect back to this idea that our thoughts create. So I mean if you want to go in the dream space, if you want to go to the pyramids of Egypt, you can literally kind of like think it and you'll go to it. And there's a lot of different ways to even explore like how you can travel within the dream space. And so there's a, again, there's a lot to say about the dream space, but I think just being able to um, understand that the dream space isn't just like a place within our minds individually, but it's actually a shared space. It literally is like, what what we what at this point we can kind of just refer to as the astral plane. So you know when you when you go to sleep, your physical body goes to sleep, and then your astral body leaves your body and goes into the astral planes. And the astral planes is again like this infinite. You can think of it as just like a cloudy space, but it's ripe. It's almost like the white room in the Matrix or whatever. But when you don't feel that you're consciously creating it, it does have like this uh, very peculiar effect where we can ask the question of like, well, what is filling the dream? Like, how much of it is coming directly from us, us, and like how much of it is just kind of like the universe filling in that present moment with something? So, I mean, the dreams in themselves, uh, when you get to the concept of the higher self and everything, it would make sense that, yes, within our dream space, it's a chance for us to communicate with ourselves. And that's why, even within the dream space, it, it, it links into this idea of understanding that time isn't existing linearly. I and mean, information flowing through the dream space is something that can be received and actually be interpreted. So that's where you get the idea of people dreaming maybe about past lives, or you get the idea of people dreaming about the future. Again, it's within this physical dimension of reality that we have the, uh, uh, the construct of time. But within the dream space, it's this accessing into, you know, almost thinking of it as like the original internet, the interverse of consciousness, of humanity itself, and understanding that within the dream space, you can literally ask questions. You can you can think of the dream space almost as like a, a technology. I mean, the word technology it just literally means extension of, like extension of like humans. So, I mean, you know, just in that sense, like, yes, like computers are technology, but even things like psychedelics in some ways like people would be able to say um, like that is like a form of technology that can be sort of integrated and, and become a part of and in the same way the dream space like the dream space is like we're syncing up with a, a, a form of innate natural technology within the experience of the mass interconnected hyperdelic reality that we all are so the dream space for me definitely is important because it opens us up again to this concept of us being multidimensional beings and to understand that our thoughts create and there's a lot more to it but I want to be able to pass the talking stick around uh, a little bit more and we'll go through with this broadcast um, past 11 and uh, we'll, we'll finish with a bit of a closing meditation as well and uh, again we'll kind of leave with the intention of coming back to the dream class next class which will be two weeks from now with the intention of us like not just hearing these ideas and just like being like oh that's cool that's fun it's exciting but encouraging each of us to bring more of a conscious mindfulness into our dream practice so maybe that means you know 
for you, for people listening to this, for some people, that can also be an incorporation of like cultivating your sexual energy. So maybe if you're a person that has their own habits and stuff like that, this can be a call for you, a call to action to change your own habits. And definitely when it comes to cultivating sexual energy, you may find that like the first like week is is extra challenging, but once you kind of get past a hump for yourself, then you'll you'll feel that you'll begin to notice the results of it, and you'll actually feel a shift within yourself because obviously cultivating sexual energy doesn't just bleed over into the dream space; it bleeds over into our everyday actions and just like inspirational energy that we sort of have bef- behind us to create. So. We'll get more into some of those topics uh, as we continue to go on, but um, yeah, I just want to be able to open up the mics. And I also know uh, we do have a, a new a new player has joined the game. Uh, Ashraf has uh, joined. So Ashraf, uh, if you want to share a little bit about maybe why you're interested in dreams or why we should be interested in dreams, feel free to unmute yourself and say hello, and we can pass the talking stick off. So, hey man. Hey dudes. Yeah. Thank you, Brendan. <laughs> um, it's really synchronous that this was happening today because I've always wanted to lucid dream since I was a kid, and I could lucid dream when I was a kid, but for whatever reason, I stopped being able to as I got older. And recently, um, I've been going through like some tough challenges, and more than ever, I've been wanting to like feel like free of my, like my flesh body, you know, like astral travel, and um, so I actually like I ordered. Um, some lucid dreaming tea from like Amazon, and um, but I haven't been like very emotionally or mentally stable, so I just waited to take it, and I actually just started lucid dreaming, and last night, but this morning really, I had five lucid dreams in a row. This has never ever happened for me in my entire life. I've had like every once in a while. Like, <laughs> You know, like a really potent lucid dream, like every once in a while, so that I know what people are talking about. But I really can't do it on demand. I've I've tried meditation, astral travel, so many things, and I just bought this tea, didn't drink it, put it above my bed, and I started lucid dreaming five in a row. I'm so happy about it, and it, it's so cool that this happened to me today when you were hosting this thing. So, um. Yeah, if you want to hear more, I'll share, but yeah, so, (laughs) yeah, it's awesome. Crazy synchronicity. Cool. Um, Yeah, I was going to say, man, what what exactly, what tea were you sharing there? And sorry to the Facebook tea, I know you guys did the audio. So this is called, um, it's by Anna Mundi, and um, you can find it on Amazon. I've always looked for Lucid Dream Teas on Amazon, but they haven't really been available, and this just came out. They just started offering their tea on Amazon. So it's called um, Anamundi, and uh, I'll post a link here so that, like, after the event, so, like, everyone can see it. And it's just, like, 20 bucks, and um, it's got ashwagandha and blue lotus are probably the most potent things in it. Um which are said to give you lucid dreams just like um, by drinking or smoking. You can also smoke these herbs. Um, But uh, they're typically made into a tea. And, um, yeah, and it's also totally legal. All this stuff is totally legal. That's the other cool thing. Um, But, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, man, that's, like, definitely you can share a link for that, and, and we'll post a... Uh, cool, so. yeah. Um, I was going to say, though, uh, did you want to share, did you want to tell us a little bit more about your experience with the lucid dreaming and kind of maybe anything you learned, anything that just kind of blew your mind? or? Yeah, yeah, I would it? love to. Okay, okay go ahead, man. So share your stories. Basically, I'm just, I always dream, actually. I always usually have quite vivid dreams, um... And I'm also part of this community called Hukalo, or humancolony.org. And we all kind of dream together about the same things, about being on these spaceships with these other aliens, like all together as like a family. And I often have dreams of this, and I always remember. Um, But I'm never like, uh, unless I go over it in my mind the next morning, I could forget. And, you know, I'm I'm not aware that I'm dreaming. So basically... 
as I'm having my usual dreams, I just realize in the dream that I'm dreaming, and all of a sudden, like, you know, I, I can, uh, well, first of all, I can, like, fly. You know, I just immediately just want to fly, so I just immediately start getting up, and to the degree that I can believe that I can fly, I can fly, like, that fast. But if I start to, like, doubt, I fall to the ground, um, which is quite interesting. And, um, but I, like I said, I had five in a row, and usually what happens is, like, I realize I'm dreaming, and I'm so taken, everything becomes more vivid. All of a sudden, all the colors pop out more. Sometimes my body goes numb, and I can feel my body in the bed as I'm moving my body, and so, like, like my consciousness is, like, transferring more to the dream body so that if I move my arms... I can feel my dream body moving rather than my body in bed moving. Um, and uh, everything becomes more clear. I can move. And um, I haven't actually been able to like shift places, but usually the places that I'm in when I realize and I go lucid is already so interesting. Like I dreamt of this past life in, in New England with uh, one of my friends, Anna, uh, She's my best friend, and it was another life because she looked different, but I knew it was her. She had the same spirit, same energy, same soul. And uh, so, yeah, like, I, we were in England, and I, like, flew around these houses. And I went to this one house, and I found her in there, and then, we, like, we went rock climbing. And I was also able to fly and, and uh, like, make love with her at the end. And, like, uh, like... I don't have much of a sexual life, like, you know, like, right now, so, like, it's freaking amazing. It's, like, act like, it's, like, actually, you know, having sex. Like, there's no difference. There's zero difference. So I woke up really, you know, really happy. Like, I just got to live this other life. That's what it's like. If you're not, like, happy with your life and you have this awesome lucid dream, you'll wake up really happy. You'll wake up like, you know what, this is okay, because there's another life that I get to live, and it's it's awesome. Um, but I, I haven't been able to do it until, like, recently. I, I recently had a couple lucid dreams, but then this morning, I woke up, and it always happens in the morning. I sleep in, I wake up, go to the bathroom, come back, and then I go into my sleep really light, and I just became lucid, and it happened five times in a row. Like, <laughs> it was just so awesome. And I, I really wish for everyone to have a lucid dream experience and to be able to, to do it on demand, because I've heard that you can do that. So, yeah. My man. That's, uh, that's really interesting to just say, especially, like, you said being able to live out your past life, uh, or at least what was interpreted as a past life. Um, uh, you know, again, with, with some of what you said there, um, do you, how would you feel like people should maybe incorporate uh, discernment with like dreams, like if something? Because I mean, that, that like that's the thing with with dreams. It's just like it's just like was that actually a past life or was that our like story of a past life but does that story like actually make it real or something like that like at what point were, were you uh, maybe even just like using doubt within your own concept of this being a past life or, or is it more just like an intuitive thing that you feel it yes it most definitely was or is that just kind of like a story that fits into your perception I know it's kind of like nitpicky and stuff like that but no, yeah. I, I love the question because I think a lot of people wonder you know are my dreams just some random thing or am I experiencing another life? Am I astral traveling? I think it's a good question. Um, and I can always tell the difference. It's almost like I have two types of dreams. Uh, I'll just call one of them karmic dreams. They don't really make any kind of sense. I can't imagine ever having lived a life that's like that. Um, some, You know, it, they're really wacky. They don't make much sense, but they're extremely emotional. I experience a lot of feelings and I process a lot emotionally. Um, like if I have a dream in a haunted house and there's like an animated clown following me, I mean, you know, I'm freaked out and then my parents are at the top 
and I'm calling to them, but they can't hear me, and I'm like crying, and then I wake up crying because my parents couldn't hear me. It's so obvious that I'm like processing like emotional, you know, feelings and, and pain and experience, and so like that's another great part of dreams is that we can process things that we didn't, you know, in our waking life consciously. We can process them subconsciously in our dreams, but then the ones that I consider oh, this is fourth density or the fourth dimension, which, uh, so like I consider I, that I live in the third density or the third dimension, and I would consider uh, most of my dreams, I feel like I'm in fourth density. Everything's lighter. Um, basically, yeah, everything's just lighter. More things are possible, like walking through walls, uh, gravity's lighter, flying sometimes. Um, and these are all things that, as I'm aware of, are possible in fourth dimension or density, as people like to call it. Um, and they, they, I'm me. I'm in my own body. I interact with other people that I know, or sometimes don't know. But there's a very obvious, at least for me, difference between um, a karmic dream and astral travels and adventures, things that we're doing you know, it's like, where does our soul go when we go to sleep? I personally don't think it just sits there. I think it goes and does things, and that's what our dream is. It's just a continuation of our consciousness in a, in a different way that's not um, limited by third-dimensional rules in physics. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. And uh, I... It, that idea like really fascinates me uh, I mean just kind of putting it into words and in a way that just kind of like makes more sense perhaps for some people but the idea that literally right like when we dream our soul our soul is still living like it is living it is having an experience in the same way you know like a tree grows if it's just there like an organism moves and stuff like that like the soul Everything keeps moving and everything like that. The soul will keep moving, so it goes places and it has. And again, you know, like with the dream space, for some people, maybe they kind of visualize it as being like out there. But don't forget that it's really it's in there. It's in there, and in the out there is the in there. So it's a very, uh, again, pointing back to the idea that this universe is so much more than than kind of what we've been led to believe, or at least what our concepts are, are capable of understanding. But understanding that within our within ourselves, like even through meditation, through other altered states of consciousness, we can access like gateways and portals and experiences and realms like of this multi-dimensional reality. And and again, like obviously recognizing that yes, we have like this density which we can refer to as a third, and then the dream space, which we can either refer to as like the fourth or just, you know, relative something higher. But then it doesn't stop there, you know, it doesn't end there. It's like that's another thing to keep in to keep in mind is that like the astral planes is not the be all end all. Like that is another like interpolation of consciousness within a space where it can interact and experience, but like there's other places and again they're very like fractally and and uh, yeah, very very interesting to just sort of reminisce on what it means to be a multi-dimensional being, so to speak. But yeah, within within the dream space, I, I think it's a it's it's a good thing to just kind of you know, yeah, like there's a lot of ways to interpret dreams, and sometimes it's like watching a movie, and sometimes it's a very visceral experience, and sometimes as as we were kind of hearing from Ashraf, where you literally have an opportunity to like live out like an entire life, and then through there you actually learn the lessons, and then like those lessons incorporate and carry over into your waking consciousness as much as you kind of choose for them to be. And sometimes maybe even if you don't choose, it will still be a subtle thing. And again, you know, like that's the idea is that it's an interesting concept to think that as I was referring to, we want to become better students of this school, of these teachings, and one of the ways is to pay attention within our dreams, but even if we don't remember our dreams, or we may not be paying attention to our dreams, it's still, like, from my perspective, makes sense to think that the dreams are still doing something to our soul, like, there's still something that is going on, there's still, like, some sort of 
evolution or experience that is being gained through the soul. But obviously what happens when we turn that into a mindful practice? What happens when we bring intention into that? And the obvious thing is that, you know, it has the potential to just merge and create a, a, a new perception of reality, like one that is like both made from the experiences of this plane and the other plane. So, you know, there are some people and they have dreams of like healing the earth grid at night. So like that's a very interesting thing of, of thinking about like how some people, they'll get lucid at night and they'll literally kind of do almost what we would do within our paradigm shift, um, go, like their guided global meditations that we do, where we would imagine us floating around the earth and projecting healing love energy to it. Like I know there are people who will consciously do that within the dream space at night. And, and again, like that's... When it comes to lucid dreaming, you know, again, you you have the ability to create whatever you want to create in that moment, potentially. So, for some people, they'll they'll definitely go through the experiences of like using it for adventure, using it for flying, using it for having like sexual experiences, and that's all like fun and games and everything, and it's still important, though let's open up to the idea of what happens if we can become conscious and lucid enough within our dream and more of us start actually saying, hey, okay, like, let's go heal the earth grid tonight. Like, let's go, like, encode energy into it. Let's, like, start manifesting. Let's start creating things within the dream space that are literally going to kind of, like, bleed into or merge into this reality in some ways. So um, we can think of the dream space as, a, as, a, as, a, as kind of like a prelude to this reality. So if we want to create something within this reality... Let's start creating it within our dreams. And again, that's not just within our dream streams. It's also within our meditations, within our imaginations. And, and going back to the simple idea of the power of visualization as well. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of stuff on dreams. Um, I was going to say, Maria, was there anything you might want to just, like, add into what we were talking about there? I saw you comment in the chat as well, so if you would like. Yeah, I really, uh, I'm glad, Ashraf, you got to join in. It was really exciting just to hear from someone who's been lucid because definitely, like, from the lucid experiences I've had and the most recent one, like, wasn't too, too long ago. Um, but, yeah, or, or sorry, it was it was a while ago. Like, I don't honestly, like, remember what the most recent lucid dreaming experience I had was. But every time that you do, again, especially for people who haven't had a lucid dreaming experience yet, having that first lucid dreaming experience can be a completely reality shifting thing for them because at that point they're just like holy shit like th there is another experience to this reality I am experiencing things and I know I'm not in my physical body yet I'm still experiencing things like how this is magic you know that's <laughs> dreams are magic if you're thinking about it from that perspective so to speak but uh, yeah like as more people continue to have a lucid dream experience because I think everyone can have them and as more people begin to have them and just vivid dreams in general and developing that connection, it's going to change the world and and definitely for, for those of us who who you know, for all the shifters out there, people who are intentionally helping shift consciousness definitely, like, ask yourself what relationship you want to develop with your dream space because you can kind of approach it from a very altruistic point of view. It's it's no longer just becomes about you. You're actually developing discipline and practicing your dream space so that you can help others. And that answer may reveal itself to you in time. It may not be something that you fully understand at this point, like how you'll be able to help others through becoming more conscious in your dreams. But again, it just goes back to consciousness within the self and the waking state as well, lucid living. Maria, go ahead if you'd like to jump in with anything. Sure. I, I don't think I've necessarily lucid dreamed, but I have had experiences where I'm doing um, energy work in my dreams and, um, and feeling a lot of vibration and sound in the dream. And then when I'm waking up and then when I am awake, fully awake, I experience that vibration and that sound, that whoom, whoom sound and energy it, filling my bedroom space. So, so I, I don't know what that is. Um, it seems like a, a really intense carryover. Um, I don't think it's lucid, but um, I'm really excited to explore that. Uh, it's something I've I've wanted to do for a while, and you know all the the little techniques 
haven't really been doing it. So I'm wondering if I just need to get a bag of that tea and stick it above my bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what, what did it was just thinking about. It was just, just having the tea there. I saw it every night. It just stuck into my subconscious. And, um, and I know what you're talking about, that feeling like if you're about to go into a dream or you're just coming out of one, that, at least for me, it's like a slow vibration, almost like a sound. It's like, boom. And my body is in a different like state of being. And I think it's like, uh, it's just, uh, it's like, I think our body goes into a different mode when we sleep. Um, and yeah, it's just like, we're just feeling like the transition from a higher frequency to a, lo a lower, more um, dense one. Not necessarily lesser frequency, but just more dense. Things are more physical. Um, so yeah. Um, go ahead, guys. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to say, like, in terms of transitioning from dreaming or just sleeping in general to waking up, like, I've definitely had like that experience where it's like a very slow transition of like becoming conscious that that I am awake and conscious and then having the moment of like sometimes I you know especially because I've been transitioning between living in different places and everything like sometimes I'll wake up and have that moment of like not knowing where I am and like even like like I don't even open my eyes I just kind of have this moment of assessing my surroundings you know without even looking and just being able to be like oh yeah that's where I am um, but in any case I, I do have my 8 a.m. exam so I, I need to get off soon and wanted to you know have my closing comments and um, and uh, you know one thing in terms of my own dream experiences I have had one dream where I became lucid at the end of it of like you know I, I look down at my hands which is one tip I've heard of to like have an intention before you go to bed to look at your hands during your dream and um, so I actually succeeded in that once and I, I left the dream very soon afterwards, but, like, I did have that experience. Um, and then another experience I've had with dreaming is, uh, I think there was an earthquake in Japan in, like, I want to say 2011 or something, and I actually had had an end-of-the-world dream, like, right around that time, which was um, very interesting. <laughs> Um, but, yeah, so, anyway, I, I do need to go to bed, but, um, want to have my last piece in. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Kaya. I really appreciate you sharing with the class, and, and your story, again, was amazing from earlier, so. Um, my, my friend who's with me just confirmed it was 2011, <laughs> so <laughs> I have that right. <laughs> Cool, cool, awesome. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, again, you know, for Kaya, for anyone, if you're inspired to write more poems inspired by dreams or your individual dreams and stories, please feel free to do that, and we can come back and share them again next week. So I think that would actually be a nice little, again, little mini assignment that we can take on for ourselves to create, like, a little mini poem based on our dreams. So, cool. Again, just by saying, like, hey, universe, I'm going to do that, then the universe is going to be like, what? We're writing a dream? Oh, cool. Like, I'm going to send you some awesome dream. <laughs> so, because, again, you know, we don't know. Like, I, I, think, I think it literally is more literal than we realize in terms of our intentions and communications with dreams. So, cool. Kaya, thanks again for, for joining us here. Look forward to hanging out again. So, awesome. Oh, and she's got her love pillow. <laughs> Peel. Okay, bye, Kaya. Good luck with your exam. <laughs> cool.
Um, okay, guys, so uh, as it is, it's about 11.20. I want to be able to get into wrapping up the episode soon enough, and we'll, we'll just kind of finish with a short meditation, though, honestly, it won't be too, too long of one. Um, just in terms of a couple tips, you know, in the future, we'll talk more about it, but getting into reality checks and how to become lucid. So, I mean, within this class, we've, we've kind of talked a little bit about an overview of what dreams are, understanding that we're multidimensional beings, understanding that dreams create, understanding, like, a little bit about, like, what lucidity means and personal experiences and how dreams can access, how we can access and be seen information from beyond the present moment within our dreams. And uh, again, you know, in terms of being able to uh, achieve lucidity, uh, there's different ways uh, of, of related to that, related to reality checks, and part of it is also with meditation. And, uh, you know, even a simple one for some people could be just trying to... Um, well, I was going to say, like, writing it down and doing, like, waking up and taking uh, taking naps in the afternoon is definitely uh, an opportunity to become lucid. And, you know, if you want to try a tea, uh, that's definitely a choice that you can make. But at the same time, I, I think doing it without anything extra is also a, an exciting path as well. So, because, um, I mean, I, that's always the thing, like, with any of the other teas or anything like that is that you, you just want to make sure that you don't let it become a crutch. So it's, it's important to just work with it as an ally and to honor it and then be like, okay, you've shown me what's already within me. Thank you, plant medicine. And then you like move off of it, right? And then and then accessing it again is even even more meaningful in some ways for you through through that practice. So so yeah, we'll we'll get more into that and, and in future ones you'll you'll be able to learn more. And if you have anything that you want to add in the future related to diets and particular dream herbs and, and just like other vitamins and minerals in the body, I know uh, some of our future guests including Laura Lyons, uh, she'll be able to talk a little bit more about that specifically. Um, but yeah, like there's a lot more. There's definitely a lot more to to be able to talk about dreams. Uh, you know, even just related to the flying stuff. Um, go back and look at the Peter Pan movies because I think that was teaching us a lot about dreams and teaching us that if you think you can fly, you can fly. And even what uh, what Ashraf was saying earlier within his dreams, it's a very interesting topic of how if you notice that when you doubt yourself in your dream, like it actually will affect your ability to fly. So it, it's an opportunity for us to fully be present in an idea so within dreams again it's not so much <clears throat> sometimes it's not so much thinking about like trying to fly as much as it is letting go of your concept that gravity even exists because if you're flying and then you start to like have this fear of falling it's actually kind of disguised as a con it's actually another concept of like your concept of gravity bringing itself into your just like interpretation of reality at that present moment but instead if you can just be like no like you know like gravity like I, I, I again kind of like what Ashraf said that even if you have like one moment of, of doubt or one in the like little part of you that kind of doubts it then you'll actually be able to notice uh, that concept so again if it helps with you try thinking about how gravity uh, isn't real within the dream. Gravity isn't there. So when you're doing a waking reality check, and this is an example of reality check, is you can actually do this. So the reality check that you can do is to practice jumping within the waking state. And so when you're jumping, you know, maybe you can do it every time you like walk through, uh, or every time at like at a certain a certain time of day. So say at 11 11, you jump, or every I was gonna say, you know, every time you like walk through a door or something, but that could be pretty regular, or frequent. It just depends on if you don't mind like making your friends think that you're already weirder than they already think you are but that's half the fun about this because the last questions would be like what the hell are, like did you, why do you keep jumping like what's going on so but um again you know with, within that concept of, of when you're jumping the idea is is that you're repeating a pattern that once you repeat it enough within your waking state it will become a habit within your dream space which is like part of the idea is that you have to develop it as a practice regularly and this is something that I'm going to be working on more too as well is getting disciplined with my reality checks but it's it's very easy to just be like ah you know it's not making a difference but again it will make a difference you just kind of have to step into that commitment of it but what I was going to say is that in relation to the flying um, and doing a reality check by jumping when you're jumping don't just jump with the intention of like seeing whether or not you'll you'll uh, like to see whether or not you'll fall back down within that present moment because it's not like you're checking to be able to be like there's a subtle difference between saying, "Okay, I'm gonna jump to make sure that like I'm a, that I'm 
or sorry, okay, I'm kind of getting stumbled on my words here, but I was just going to say there's a subtle difference between jumping with the intention of flying and jumping with the intention of seeing whether or not you'll fall back down. Because if you're jumping with the intention of seeing whether you'll fall back down, then it's just kind of like you double-checking to confirm that you're within this reality. But what you're going to want within the dream space is that subtle difference of really believe every time that you jump within the physical reality, don't just jump to see whether or not you'll fall down. Jump with the intention to fly. So that's kind of what I'm saying. So every time that you jump within this waking reality, put your full heart into it that, hey, you just might be able to fly in that present moment. Because otherwise, there's a possibility that within your dreams, you could get to that moment where you're like almost lucid, and you'd be like, oh my god, I have to practice jumping right now. And you'll practice jumping, and you'll actually fall back down within your dream. And again, that's because you're still holding on to the idea that you think like gravity is actually real, and then you might actually like just walk right past a moment that was potentially lucid. Uh, lucidity could have been enabled in that moment. So again, when you jump, put your heart into it and see yourself flying. And again, you know, Peter Pan style. So um, cool, guys. And yeah, definitely as a as a class progresses, uh, looking forward to being able to hear some practical tips and experiences and stories that we all have to share. And that's the idea is that there's so much more about dreams to be able to get into. Um, I just want to be able to open up the microphone again if anybody else has anything they'd like to share uh, or any even feedback or ideas for what they would like to see from the class. Um, Steve-O, your mic is open. Did you want to say something? Go ahead. Um, you're muted still right now, even though it says you're not muted. So we can't hear you, actually. Your mic is real quiet. Y yeah, it, it was real quiet before. It was actually, but not, right now it's actually not coming through at all. So I'm not sure. <clears throat> Sorry, Steve. Uh, <laughs> if you want to type a comment into the chat, please feel free to do that. If you want to just type like a few sentences. Um, and then I'll, I'll just read it out loud. But uh, again, uh, just opening up the mic, uh, Ashraf, any thoughts, uh, anything else that you just want to share? Practical tips and tricks for people maybe? Yeah, I wanted to say, I mean, um, with, with what you were saying, that's how I had my first lucid dream was by jumping. I woke up in my bed, I had to go to the bathroom, um, so, and it was dark, you know, so I went to the bathroom, and then... Um, I couldn't turn the lights on. They weren't working. I was like, oh, what's going on? So I start running, and as I'm running, I start going higher than I'm supposed to, and I realize, oh, my God, I'm dreaming. That's how I had my first lucid dream. So it, it can totally work. And then, it, and then that actually turned out to be a dream within a dream. I woke up thinking, oh, thank God I'm out. And it was actually a second level of the same dream. It was really trippy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and again, you know, like dream levels, that's one thing that we didn't even talk about yet. But yeah, you can see. So the fact that dreams are possible within dreams is kind of relates back to, again, this fractal nature of reality, uh, things fitting inside other things, dimensions within dimensions, as above, so below. So we literally see that within dreams. Uh, Sherman just had to head out, so thanks again to Sherman for swinging in. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Cool, guys. Uh, I'm just kind of taking a moment here to think about anything else that we might have overlooked that's obvious. Um, yeah, you know, again, just really encouraging you guys to take, uh, to put intention towards paying attention towards your dreams and, and doing it from an altruistic point of view. Do it, do it to access new experiences for yourself, but do it as sort of like a, uh, an act of self-love for yourself and others as well. So, um, yeah, with that said, I, I think we'll uh, just kind of finish off with a, a short meditation, and this will just be a simple visualization of the tree, and we're just kind of, like, going to visualize it from a distance, and then we'll, like, continue the meditation within uh, our dream space, basically. <clears throat> so, uh, does, but before we do that, though, again, does anybody else have anything else that they want to share? Um, I know Gary is in here, but Gary's microphone doesn't work, I don't think, so, but, uh, I mean, Ashraf, if you got more to say, then by all means, man, feel free. Yeah, I wanted to mention, um, I'm gonna, I'll post the link, uh, there's a video by, uh, Bashar, who's a, a being channeled by Daryl Anka, and he gives a really cool way, uh, to lucid dream, which is basically you take a mirror, you take an object that rep really represents you, 
and then you take an object that really doesn't represent you, the exact opposite of who you are, and put those two objects right next to each other in front of this mirror, and then you take a post-it note and write, I am dreaming on the mirror, and then you do a meditation with that, you just sit and look at it every day, and, you know, uh, and so apparently that can really work, you know, so writing post-it notes, but that mirror technique, and I'll, I'll put the links for Bashar, he, he always talks about lucid dreaming, they talk about how their civilization, the Sasani, actually, um, the way they transitioned in spiritual densities, like from third to fourth, was through waking up, realizing that reality is a dream itself, and, w and they started waking up in their dreams collectively, and then all of a sudden, they started loosing, lucid dreaming in reality, and they couldn't tell the difference between waking reality and sleeping reality, and that's how they, like, ascended. So it's a cool little anecdote, and I'll, I'll post links for that, because it's really awesome. That's awesome, man. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, like, oh, there's so much more uh, to get into, and again, you know, we didn't even... Um, I, I, br I briefly mentioned to it uh, earlier, like, the, the theoretical concept of, like, the role DMT plays within dreaming and uh, and even just kind of, like, how that correlates within a little bit of that story that you were talking about there. But, again, you know, DMT, theoretically, uh, based on, like, what you sort of interpret based on your own understanding of things. But, yeah, DMT is, is a chemical that's released during birth, during death, and during dreams. And uh, obviously, like people can uh, experience DMT as uh, as something that you would do for a psychedelic experience. But it's important to recognize the possibility that it is there and it is present, and understanding the potential of it and what's actually happening. Um, but again, you know, it's just it's just kind of opening up some very uh, interesting doors of perception related to parts of the universe that we are still exploring as we speak. So. Very cool. So again, you know, this body is like a vehicle. It's like a spaceship. It's like a launch pad. And every night, we can get very excited about going to, going into sleep. We can do it mindfully, and we can kind of go through with like visualization practices as we fall asleep. And again, I want to be able to give you guys like uh, some simple meditations in the future that we'll be able to practice doing group visualization and also incorporate like activities of group co-creation within a meditation so it would be like a shared meditation uh, interactive imagination co-creation so say that 11 times fast <laughs> anyways um, cool okay uh, again just if there's anybody else who wanted to share anything before we just jump into the meditation then we'll wrap up the show after that um, Gary's mic doesn't work, but he's saying in the side, uh, da -da 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 -da. astral projection with eyes open is a fun toy of the mind. I close my eyes. I see another reality sometimes. And a heads-up display with sweet laser lines or whatever else I decide to make. So that's really interesting. That's really cool. Gary's uh, very got some very visual-based concepts um, in terms of, like, how he experiences reality. And, and I'm really looking forward, again, with this class being able to learn from each other, being able to learn about how each of us interacts with our dream space. And, and Gary's sort of alluding to this idea of, like, you know, kind of incorporating technology within the dream space, augmented technology. Spiritual cybernetics is a term that he's using. So you sort of create a concept within your imagination, within the dream space, and then you can like reapply it, and it'll actually sort of serve a purpose. You know, you could create like a device that teleports you to specific parts within the dream space. You could actually start building technologies and tools. I mean, how cool is that? Say, like, every time you go into the dream space, it's like entering back into a video game that you were previously playing, and you have items that carry over, and then you can have technology that you can call into that moment. And say, like, okay, this is a technology that will, like... Yeah, you could manifest an awesome speeder bike or something, or you could say you could call up some ascended masters or something like that. So it can get very creative. And I, I, one of the things that I'll just sort of mention briefly, you know, within the dream space, I love the idea of uh, like phys doing training within the dream space, kind of like the Matrix in a very literal way. And you know, it's no mistake that the Matrix is so similar uh, to everyday life and the dream space, and you know, metaphors related to that. But being able to do martial arts training within the dream space, for me, like that's a really 
interesting and exciting thing. And again, we'll get more into the all sorts of awesome stuff a little bit later into the Paradigm Shift Dream class. So I will just say thank you so much to everyone who is listening to this. And of course, this is a part of a bigger project, ParadigmShiftCentral.com. You can check that out uh, if for a reason you have not yet, you may be new to the project, and you'll see that it is a real-world game to help shift consciousness. And we are building a global team of shifters and creating Paradigm Shift communities across the world. And we are also a team of media creators. So this broadcast, if you're listening to the video if you're listening just to the mp3 there is the video version of it online through the website as well but this is a form of us documenting the shift in consciousness so this is the first class of many but each one will be us co-creating and documenting and you know sharing stories and that's the thing like down the road we're going to be having stories to sell and so stories to tell using the space as a story to tell about things that we are experiencing within the astral that could be very bring back some very interesting messages and uh, I think it will give us a chance to kind of expand our place within uh, the uh, larger galactic civilization of this universe not just this class but as all of us continue to access our dreams in a more conscious level so um, we can get a little bit uh, yeah so just going back um, Gary was saying mind is a computer and holographic projector coded by thoughts so yeah exactly and uh, Marie is pretty excited. She says, I feel like a kid in a candy store. So, um, yeah, Gary's talking here. He says, I've had my spiritual armor on for about a month now of my own design. It finally stuck. Helps maintain positive vibes and energy balance. Spiritual nanotechnology manifests some. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting uh, Gary's mic working in the future and um, just being able to hear more about how he's brought this into his own reality and uh, again more practical tips but just the concepts are there so lucid dreaming is a portal to some very exciting potentials and again it goes back to us practicing our place within the universe as creators so um, Steve was saying, uh, I, I was going to mention, even though I do not dream, I know that doubt and fear can destroy your reality. So, yeah, definitely. Dreams teach us that. You know, there's a lot to dreams. And again, within the dream space, uh, what we were talking about, if you doubt that you fly, you can fly. So the dream space is about letting go of doubt and letting go of fear. And that will appear to you in many different ways. And you'll see parts of yourself and and you'll be given the opportunity to transmute and to literally you know going back to the alchemy concept literally transform who you are and sometimes within the dreams you'll see the as I said before the dreams will show you the hero and it will show you the villain within yourself and you'll do things within your dreams and some of it will be like wow that was awesome I feel so awesome with what I did and then other parts will be like dreams of you like you know like <clears throat> hurting people or hurting a friend or something like that and then you'll wake up and you'll be like wow you know I didn't feel good about that but acknowledging still that there is a part of you that is that but then that gives you the opportunity to say like well do I want to bring that into this reality or do I want to transmute that or do I want to you know dissolve that fear or dissolve look more into that so dreams are a beautiful non-linear way for us to learn more about ourselves and um, yeah so uh, with that said, we'll get into a short meditation, and then, um, yeah, it won't be too long again. I just got to go downstairs and take care of uh, my dog and everything like that. But I will say, before this, uh, before we get into the meditation, before this broadcast wraps up, that if people are new to the community, that you can create a profile and join the team and get involved with future team-building hangouts there, subscribe for the newsletter. If you are subscribed to the newsletter, just keep, uh, keep an eye open because it will usually show up in your spam inbox, uh, usually the return rate on those emails is pretty, uh, can be quite minimal and a big part of that is just because most of them are landing in people's spam box. So you'll see emails with new updates related to upcoming classes and any particular updates. So again, you can subscribe to that through the main website and of course like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Paradigm Shift Central and go to as a bonus to get updates of quest journals and central news and articles through the main web from the main website through your Facebook go to facebook.com paradigm shift central live net and I'll post a link for that as well and uh, that'll give you automatic notifications within Facebook about new posts 
happening through the community. And again, this is an opportunity, this project is created as an opportunity for us to be able to co-create conscious media and also to be able to feature your content that you're creating and there's a lot more to it. And if you're listening to the show and you enjoy the show, also you're invited to sign up for the monthly support squad and that's how you get the Shifter Booster Kit and you can find more of that through the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Brendan Colton. And again, links for that will be uh, in the show notes as well. And um, with what's coming up in the future, there will be another team building hangout this Thursday. So that will actually be on the Thursday, May 5th, uh, one day after May the 4th. Let's keep in mind that tomorrow's International Star Wars Day, if you want to call it that. So shout out in early May the 4th to be with you guys. And uh, then after that, the... Um, Next, the dream class won't be until a week after that, and in between that, we'll also be having Destiny School coming up, and the topic for Destiny School will be about meditation. So you can sort of prepare some notes on that as well, and join us for that recording and, and help us. Uh, you can sort of bring like a mini presentation about meditation if you want into that broadcast in the same way that we can do that within the dream class. You can sort of bring mini concepts and teachings about dreams and anything that you want to share and share it with the class and help us with these recordings. So um, I will just say there's a, a new player has joined the game and I just want to give a shout out. So shout out to G-Ride. Uh, thanks for joining in, man. Uh, we're getting close to the end, but we still have time to pass the mic around a little bit more. Uh, G-Ride, did you want to just uh, test your mic, say hello, and is there anything about dreams that maybe you want to talk about or why you're interested in dreams or any practical tips? Huh. Yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, it sounds okay. Go ahead. Okay, awesome. Yeah, um, I guess G Ride's my other account, but I'm actually the my main account is the metaphysical adventurer. So, <laughs> um, a little bit about me. Whenever I sleep, uh, I lucid dream. Back in the day, I used to dream all the time and control it. Now, 80% of the time, but uh, I keep an active uh, dream journal. Uh, I'm, I'm attending the School of Metaphysics where we practice dream interpretation in the universal language of mind. So, uh, I'm teaching an, an introduction to dream interpretation course there. So, I'm pretty much knee deep in dreams. Um, currently researching Edgar Casey, reading a book called Edgar Casey on Dreams. This dude knew everything to do on dreams. It was really cool. So yeah, thanks for uh, giving me this spotlight. <laughs> awesome. If you guys want to check out more about me, it's, it's 777 Adventures. Cool. Yeah, if you can post a link into the chat here on the side, we can put that into the show notes too. But, but yeah, no, that sounds that sounds pretty interesting, man. Uh, obviously, you've definitely been doing a lot of research, and and I mean, like, do you get do you guys get a lot into the uh, esoteric teachings, kind of like Gnostic teachings, from that perspective? Just, uh, um, so what we do at the school of is good, yeah. we tend to um, we we interpret like religious texts in the universal language of mind. Like one thing we did recently is interpreted the, the book of Matthew in the universal language of mind. And the universal language of mind, a little bit about that, is it's uh, the language of the subconscious, which is basically, basically images and emotions, which is also how we do dream interpretations. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very fun. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean... With some of the stuff that I went to in the past, uh, there's a London Gnostic Association. Uh, there still is uh, where I am, and they still have meetings. And, and I'll actually get around to checking them out because you know a lot of what they do is like related to astral projection, lucid dreaming practices, and everything like that. But but yeah, you know they often refer to sort of like this innate uh, language of symbolism that has existed throughout eons throughout ages and everything like that so I mean if you're seeing specific things if you're seeing like blue sphinxes within your dream uh, yes there can be a subjective interpretation to it but it's also the idea that like some of those symbols actually hold ancient energies or ancient correlations and, and things like that so you know yeah I, I, I'd, I'd be interesting definitely in learning more about just kind of some of the 
ways that you guys are able to interpret dreams and any of the information that you're called to share in the future, most definitely. So, um, yeah, and uh, if if, it, if I if we were joining this like, like about two days ago, this whole <laughs> weekend starting from Friday till uh, Sunday midnight, we were doing this thing called the National Dream Hotline, 54 hours of nonstop dream interpretation. Oh wow! Hosted by the school. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, actually, yeah, I mean, just for, for what it's worth, because I didn't mention it earlier, but I did have a dream. <clears throat> I did have a dream uh, earlier in the week, and there was, like, one part that I was able to remember. Um, and it was really interesting, because I was, like, interviewing a talking, uh, like, monkey chimpanzee. And it was really interesting. It was just, like, this, like, moderately hyper-intelligent a monkey that I was able to communicate in English and I was just like so fascinated by it so I was just like filming it in my dreams but to me I'm just like that seems like a very symbolic thing in its own way so I was just like reflecting on how that made me feel and stuff and then it's just like you know that monkey taught me a lot about myself <laughs> and I'm just like we're not too we're not too different us and the talking monkey or the monkey that dreams of talking you know because it's sort of like I even remember the monkey was just like really happy to be able to do it. It was just like, oh, you know, like, I've been wanting to communicate with you for so long, and, and this language thing, it's so beautiful. Like, I can't believe you guys do this all the time. And, like, wow, this is really exciting. And, yeah, it was actually, like, really cute. It was kind of cool. So, I don't know. Does anybody have any thoughts or <laughs> up-in-the-air interpretations? Or? Maybe another monkey was dreaming, and you guys were, like, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly right. Like, what do monkeys dream of? Like, oh, yeah, I could say a little bit about that before we... Uh, go ahead. G Ride, if you wanted to jump in, go ahead. Yeah, so I can give you a quick dream interpretation on uh, the sure. way that we do it in the immersive language of mind. Yeah, I'd love that. Uh, so, so we see animals as sort of uh, like habits, or like uh, habitual ways of being. Um, and how I would interpret this is sort of that you're becoming more in touch with certain ways of being and that uh, you're able to communicate with that pretty well. And that, I mean, that's that, and that's all you shared with me, and it seems like you're pretty harmonized with that aspect of yourself. Depending on how big the animal it is, um, it means how prominent that that uh, habit is in your life. And if you could tell me more information, like one thing I also pay attention to is like the your your emotions within the dream, and then when you get up. If there's like some kind of correlation, like how you felt in the dream and then how you felt outside the dream, what can you tell me about that? Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good. And and we were talking about that earlier about you know for some people who may have a hard time getting past like what the symbolism meant to just bring it back to the feelings that you had correlated with the dream, and that can be a reference point to write down within your dream journals as well. Um, but yeah, no, like I, I felt. I mean, there's other stuff that happened in the dream. I, my dream recall is not fully there, but like, yeah, like I felt like happy that I had the dream. It, it felt like a rare occurrence. So yeah, I, I felt like gratitude uh, upon waking up from that dream. I would say so. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I'd like to share something, a new thing in my dream, if, if I can get space. For yeah, that. yeah, by all means, man. We still got time. Yeah, for the first time ever in a dream. Uh, because I do this more often now in real life, because uh, I'm also studying this. I mean, as a metaphysical adventure, I'm, I'm researching all things dreams, metaphysics, and astrology. So a lot of people, I ask their astrological signs and their significance. So the first time ever in my dream last night, I asked, uh, it was actually two officers, a male and a female, who pulled me over uh, their, their astrological signs. And it, it was really interesting, because... Um, the man, he was a Sagittarius sun sign, Capricorn rising, and the female, she was a Capricorn sun sign, Sagittarius rising. And I'm a Sagittarius sun sign. So that, that was my first ever, like, experience with that. So that, that was pretty exciting. <laughs> it, was really, it was a really good dream. What, what would you have to say about that, Brendan? Um, well, I mean, I... I astrology-wise and everything like that, I'm sure a few people wouldn't really be able to know exactly, like, what the uh, emphasis... Like, what... Like, what... Why that was, like, so exciting and everything, like, with the... Just, like, kind of understanding that the nature behind oneself is 
correlated to the astrological signs. Um, but I, what, what I was going to say, though, like what I'm interested in is just like the uh, degree of conversation that you're you're actually able to have with the dream characters, quote unquote. Um, I'd just be kind of curious as to your thoughts of, uh, you know, like what what are some things people should keep in mind when we're interacting with uh, dream characters within the dream? I mean, you know, obvious things are just like again, everything is a reflection of you. Everything is a reflection of yourself and everything like that. Um, but sometimes I get, I, you know, I, I feel it's interesting when and uh, there's that idea that, yes, sometimes that is like a reflection of you, but is there the opportunity for <clears throat> you to communicate with other parts that aren't as, like, literally a connection of you, but are actually, like, their own intelligence or their own intelligent entity that is interacting with you within the dream space? Um, you know, sometimes is like sometimes it's you, but is it possible for sometimes for it to be its own intelligent entity within the dream space? Um, if that, G ride, if you have any thoughts on that, or yes, it's definitely possible. Um, like every dream is about the dreamer. Every person, place, or thing is some kind of aspect of the dreamer, and dreams are usually an assimilation of the experience you've had 24 to 48 hours prior to having the dream experience, and Dreams are usually a reflection of the waking state of mind you have. So if you're a, a very imaginative type of person, you tend to have more imaginative elements in your dreams. If you're just like a, an office worker or something, then you pretty much will have a dream that's related to like office material. It, it's, it's just how the dream will communicate with you. And sometimes you can also meet certain... It, it's called the visitation dream. I'm researching more about that. And... Really, you just have to play it by your feelings. Like, uh, if someone's deceased, they could, and, and you think about them, they could sometimes visit you. Uh, there could be other entities, like you could say uh, other interdimensional things, because you're so, sort of, um, and, and you might have more experience on this, Brendan, because I have never been able to, like, consciously astral project. Uh, but I could lucid dream, like, so simply. So it's really interesting uh, what kind of uh, abilities become active in this perspective, and then mm. everything else is what what I see, what I understand from the school of metaphysics. It, it's a a process of building up that discipline, that mental discipline through concentration, focus, attention, and just visualization. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, you're right. Like. The thing with dreams that that is so interesting is that everybody has like their own personal relationship to the dream space. Uh, like you said, kind of some of us come in with like abilities already unlocked, and it's interesting to think that, you know, how much of a role did that play within our past lives? Uh, is, is that something where, you know, perhaps in a previous life we had, we had already reached a point where, you know, we were having lucidity and everything like that, and then within the next life it just kind of carried over and stuff. But at the same time, I think it's totally cool and awesome to, like, have gratitude with wherever you are at on your journey, understanding that, you know, it's the challenges that give you the opportunity to learn. And so it's easy for people to be like, oh, I wish I lucid dream all the time, but if that was the case, then perhaps you wouldn't go through the process of developing the willpower that is part of like the drive and the motivation towards uh, towards your betterment, towards your transformation, towards you becoming like more of the the golden elf, the golden self uh, that you can be. So I mean, you know, for those who fall in love with the idea of becoming more conscious in the dreams, that can be a huge uh, governing factor that can transform your entire reality through your habits and through your discipline. So, I mean, yeah, there, it's kind of obvious like why so much of society doesn't really pay any attention to dreams and it's because oftentimes like it's something that requires a little bit of extra attention uh, otherwise it's just very easy to write it off as being like nothing too too important so um, I think it would be a very interesting idea to live in a society that viewed dreams as being valuable not just for the dreams themselves but for the practices and the habits that they kinda help encourage and go hand in hand with so then that's you know again what we're doing here starts off in individual circles but yeah so shout out to everyone for being here um, I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts or anything or G-Ride if you wanna bounce off that go for it yeah uh, absolutely um, for everyone wanting to go deeper into the dreams a lot of it depends on what you give your attention to. Um, 
just by being in like a, like Brendan said, just by being in a conversation like this, you're already putting more attention to this to knowing yourself through dreams. So another way you can remember your dreams is you know before you go to bed, just clear your mind, and when you're meditating, just really focus on how how much you appreciate the dreams you have and more of the abilities you want to achieve, and really really focus on the purpose of it because how I feel the subconscious mind it's a lot older and wiser than the conscious mind. The conscious mind just wants to have experiences just because it's fun. Um, but uh, when you start working on activities more purposefully, your subconscious will see that you're in alignment with what your highest purpose is and then will sort of give you abilities like that. I mean, the way I'm understanding this, you activate certain experiences for your abilities when you reach a certain level of discipline, which is when you can communicate, when you can understand the subconscious communications. And your subconscious is always communicating with you, even when waking life. Um, I mean, I, um, when I embody the metaphysical adventure, like when I'm waking state, everything is like a dream. I mean, even, even this conversation is sort of like a dream, you know? Um, and then in a dream, I, I see things as just aspects of myself. So I'm always in a state of, hey, what more can I learn, you know? So if, if people can adopt that perspective in life, instead of being afraid of it, uh, a lot of times your emotions will tell you what can guide you. Like when you feel that certain, just something within you is saying, oh man, I don't, I don't know how to feel, then it's time to really listen. Not, not, not think up here, but bring it down here and see where in your body you feel that way. And maybe even communicating that, like sometimes when, I, when I'm with a, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm, I have a potential to speak with a really attractive girl, I, I feel this weird pit in my stomach and I'm like, oh man, I I, I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Or I, I, I got all these excuses. I got, I got all these places to be. And uh, normally, I, I would just go and n not have the conversation or something. But now, what I do is, I, I literally just go there and tell them how I feel. Because that's, that's what I would do in a dream. You know, I'd just be like, I don't know what's happening, but I feel this way. Uh, what do you have to share about it? And usually, that ends up having a, a really good conversation and a really good connection. And it ends up usually being someone really intuitive. Because I I made the intention recently to connect with more intuitive people, and and really um, I think the beauty in this existence is you you can get pretty much anything that you put your mind to, that you desire. So find out. I mean, what I would say is asking the right question will lead to the right answer. So if you're not getting experiences, maybe you're not you don't you're not very clear on the purpose of why you want that experience. Or if you're asking a certain question, you're not very clear on exactly what, why you're specifically asking that question. So, writing a lot, out your thoughts a lot can help you clear your mind. That's one thing I've been practicing called stream of consciousness, where you just open up a page and just write down whatever's in your head, and then you can sort of just examine it afterwards. But uh, basically, yeah, focus, concentration, visualization. Um, all those activities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that brings up some very good reminders and stuff I think we probably kind of glanced over a bit earlier that deserves a little bit more attention. Uh, deserves a little bit more attention, but, you know, like, definitely, um, uh, I mean, the writing down your dreams is obviously, like, something that, like, more people are, should need to just be able to... Uh, it's something... Sorry, I'm kind of... I was thinking about two things at once there, and I think I actually forgot what I was going to say. Um. Yeah, sorry, sorry, half forget. But what I was gonna say though, one of the things is that okay, yeah, this is what I was gonna say. Um, yeah. So yes, writing down your dreams that's very important and everything. But yeah, I think it's important to simultaneously with your dream recall practice and your if your intention is to remember your dreams better and eventually lucid dream. Um, you know, again, because it's kind of you can't just go from like not remembering your dreams right into lucid dreaming. I mean, yes, you want to get there eventually, but step one is just to be able to remember your dreams in the first place. And so I think even uh, from there, you may start remembering your dreams, but if people find that their dreams are sort of like mundane and everything like that, you know, if you dream about being at work and stuff, then that can be a sign for you to practice, uh, as you said, clearing your mind. Um, sorry, I'm just going to mute your mic just... For a second, just for the feedback, um, but yeah, it's just uh, c clearing your mind 
is a very important thing within the work towards being able to remember your dreams a little bit more because obviously if you go to sleep with a heavy mind and you're thinking and you're stressing and you're worrying and you got like all this stuff on uh, that is going through you then that is most likely going to lead into your dream state so yes like Part of what creates the opportunity for potent dreams is kind of when you you go in with a blank, not like not just a blank slate, but you go in with like a, a calmness and a zenness. So you know, do yoga, go for walks in the park, practice just like breathing out in nature and everything like that. And then when you have when it's time to go to sleep, even go to sleep like very consciously, like go to sleep paying attention to your breathing. Like that is like a very simple way to do things. And and we can talk about this more later, but you get into the idea of like wake induced lucid dreaming, where you want to keep your body awake, or sorry, you want to keep your mind awake as your body falls asleep. So I mean a simple tip is that if you do do this and you're noticing that you're you're trying to maintain mindfulness as you're falling asleep and your body's going to send you an itch at some point, the, t the trick for that is to not scratch it because as soon as you scratch it, that's your body confirming that your mind is still awake and then it won't put you to sleep. Whereas if you don't respond to a scratch that you feel that you have as you're falling asleep, then th that creates this feed, like this change in the transmission where the uh, body believes that the mind is asleep and then it will put the body to sleep and then the mind is actually staying awake. So it's like this little like fail-safe mechanism that kind of the body naturally does when it goes to sleep and, and we can actually use that to our advantage to be able to go to sleep uh, with a, a, you know, a particular intention or idea. And even, uh, do you I, I know it's not your name name, sorry, I just sort of forget, but... Uh, Again, um, writing down questions before going to sleep is definitely something you can do. Writing down questions, writing down intentions. Even just literally writing down, I will lucid dream or I will remember my dreams can have a difference. And people sort of overlook the, the magic that writing things down actually has, not just related to dreams, but literally to encode things into the matrix and to manifest within this reality. So, I mean, writing down intentions with about this waking state, journaling is such a such a magical thing in itself. There's something very, very potent that happens when we write things down that I think a lot of people overlook. But when you at least know that there is something potent there, you can begin to understand why writing things down before you go to sleep can actually have an effect. Like it literally, this is part of like the esoteric sciences. You have to sort of think outside the box. You have to sort of think a little non-local and metaphysical. But yes, like part of the cause and effect is part of the idea. It will involve writing it down at some point. So um, all these, all sorts of, again, you know, when it comes to learning about lucid dreaming, we're kind of exploring and also creating a rule book or a player's manual for, for something as we are still figuring it out. So, yeah. Um, Ashraf, I know you got a comment, so I'm going to let you jump in with that, and then I was also going to read what Gary wrote in the chat. So, Ashraf, go ahead, dude. Yeah, just wanted to quickly say the number one thing that has helped me the most is... And I know people. some people don't enjoy journaling. I don't enjoy journaling. So when I wake up, I don't get up. I just take my iPhone, and it's got a little voice memo app. Voice memo app, And, like, every smartphone has one. Just do a quick little voicemail. Say voice memo. Say, like, the five most important things about the dream. Just keywords that will help you remember. This, and it only takes a minute, massively, massively will help you... Um, Remember your dreams. It's the number one thing that has helped me. I don't even journal anymore. I just do a quick little voice memo. I'll either run through the entire dream or just say a couple keywords, and it helps massively. Yeah, awesome, awesome tip. So, again, you know, like having the voice recording, uh, if that's something that makes more sense for you, then definitely practice using that. And, again, you know, encouraging you guys to try... Uh, doing stuff where I've what I've done as well, where I film a video of myself with the intention of it being something that I'll share online, right into the camera in that moment, and that becomes my like voice memo log. And again, you know, like oftentimes it's when we're starting to tell the story, when we have a motivation for telling the story, that we start to access like those other parts of the memory and, and things sort of jump point from one thing to another. Uh, kind of going back to even what Maria was saying, you know, when we understand that this ties into the idea of things being very um, 
uh, yeah, like the universe working through a series of portals and like hyperlinks and jump points. And I know these words aren't super technical, but it's basically the idea that like through one word, that word is a portal to a lot of other ideas and thought processes. And so, I mean, whether you're writing down your words, but when you're just like speaking things, you'll notice that as you're speaking about them, the ideas begin to unfold. They begin to open up to new ideas. So yeah, it's kind of interesting just to sort of think about that way, that as you unfold the dream, it begins to continue to like unfold. And then as your recall gets better, like it can get, your dream recall can be like huge stories, literally. I, I see people do this all the time, and that's the exciting thing about this dream class, where we'll hear people come in and talk about their dreams, and they'll just be like, oh yeah, like here, let me tell you about the amazing time where like I transformed into a magical creature and visited the astral city and then like all of this stuff happened and it sounds like some crazy sci-fi novel or something but um, just imagine being able to recall your dreams in that detail and, and again like actually waking up with a uh, uh, an exhilaration of the fact that you did experience this and 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 it's that's like the exciting thing is that yeah knowing that you know people get up get caught up and be like oh well is it real or is it not real you know when you sort of get into this idea that everything is equally unreal you realize that what matters is the fact that there was an experience and the experience is what is real if we're referring to real as like something that counts so if there's an experience then it, it it's real so when you experience things in your dream, you can consider that as real because it has the potential to influence who you are and who you are becoming. So if you just want to think about it that way. So I'm just going to read. Um, Gary left uh, some comments in the chat from earlier, and he says, uh, looking, uh, he was saying he's talking about his wearing his spiritual armor, and he says it's a lot like Doom 4 armor. Uh, Doom 4, it's video game, so more video game reference there. Um, and uh, he says it's actually like white chrome, which is a, a very awesome visualization. And then next he said, imagination, imagined, one word, nation, imagination, a realm of freedom from the modern society. Log in, hack the matrix to your will, be the guru and fly off on your magic carpet into a better now and future. I'm always wandering around the city looking for familiar faces, followed by tidal waves and tower escapes from security guards. LOL, most common, most common dreams of mine. Subliminal nonverbal language should have an autocorrect. LOL. I always crave action in my dreams, like adventure, totally done with romance. <laughs> LOL. I have a spider I used to help to exercise entities out of my third eye. It died last winter. Still lives in my home. Interesting. Cool. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he's saying that he practices online exorcisms and distance healing. That's some next level stuff right there. Um, he said, Gary continues, he said, I tried to film myself light bending in total darkness. I see a lot of swirling glowing orbs on my iPad. Haven't tried it in a while, but the hallucinations are so vivid sometimes. I hope to manifest it so technology can see these creations. Practice makes perfect. So again, you know, like when we're starting to talk about the dream space, like definitely we, we are getting into the realms of shamanism. You can think about that. So, you know, the shamans were the ones who walked between worlds and in the ancient Aboriginal tribes, the shamans like were like the ones who were aware of what the dream space was. And, and let's look back at the ancient tribal ways of how they recognize the dream space and <clears throat> acknowledge that it was a shared space and just like the attention that they gave to dreams, you know, back in the day with tribes and everything if someone had a dream about something specific they would pay attention to it because they would also see it as valuable information that could potentially help the entire tribe and another cool thing you know we haven't really talked too much about lucid dreaming or uh, astral projection I mean but uh, if, when we're talking about how animals dream I love the idea that wolves actually dream and when they dream they actually dream of like astral projection techniques where they will float outside of their body to be able to find like where the next hunt is where the next food is so rather than just like trying to hike it over a mountain they'll actually go to sleep dream find out where the deer is and then actually be able to move there accordingly once they're awake so I mean that's just an idea but I, I think it's a fascinating idea <clears throat> and again it kind of ties in with how we can actually use our dreams as strategical foresight for how we choose to navigate within this reality so 
learning from the wolves in that way. So, cool. Okay, guys. Um, let's. I'm just gonna open up the mic just for any final comments, and then we'll wrap this up. And there's still plenty more to talk about in future dream classes. And, and we're just gonna finish with a short meditation. Uh, again, I just gotta wrap this up. But yeah. Um, G ride. If you have a, I'm just reading your comment. Or did you wanna say say what you wrote? Um, yeah, I can say something. Uh, I just had a question because this is like the first uh, dream discussion that I'm in right now. But um, I don't know how far you guys, what you guys do with dreams exactly. But I'm um, wondering, do you guys practice completing the dream circuit? That is, uh, I'll explain that. Is um, when you have the dream, you write it down, and then you interpret it, and then you see how it applies to you in your waking experience, and then you look for the next dream, which could be an answer or an evolution of the thought you had previously. And so then dreams become more of a, like a tool to advance your learning that, rather than just like, you know, just visuals that are really cool. Most, most definitely that's something that I want to be able to encourage people to be able to keep in mind and this this is this is the first like launch of dream class that we're doing so this is like the first hangout uh -huh. so i mean you got here just in time <laughs> so i mean yeah we're uh -huh. like so exactly, yeah. The concept of this is that you know there's no specific curriculum. It's something that we're creating together. So the idea is, is like, hey, you know, let's bring in ideas like that. But yeah, what what you're suggesting there, I like, I like, I even like that term, completing the dream circuit. You're right. So opposed to just like having an awesome dream and then just being like, wow, and then not really fully bringing it back into a form of like practical embodiment, you might miss out on the full value of the dream. So you're right. Like I think that's an important note to just keep in mind is that yeah like dreams are are uh, they they have like a nutritional value for the soul and when we dream them we sort of have to like take that and like put it into our garden kind of thing with intention with our hands uh, with our practices so yeah just kind of whatever visuals work for people in that sense but but yeah no that's awesome man and and I really like what you brought to the show tonight and yeah I'd love to be able to hear where, where things are going in future episodes and everyone here is most most welcome to be involved and again you know like that's the idea we're going to be getting lots of other guests call in and we'll get people who will be like yeah I lucid dream every night here's a crazy story or something like that but again you know I'm really interested in this being open to the people who aren't lucid dreaming every night and, and using this as a chance for them to be encouraged and inspired and know that you're you're not alone, and that there is just by knowing that there's a team of us actively working to be able to help um, become more conscious within our dreams is is a, is a little motivator within this reality. It kind of again it gives us a shared direction. Part of the paradigm shift central real world game is to help shift consciousness and to evolve our own story as well. So, yeah, just really looking forward to being able to see where uh, again things continue to unfold. So huge shout out to everyone for for being a part of this and. Yeah, it's still lots more to come. Um, I'm just going to read Gary uh, said, uh, Ashraf actually said, uh, many things, seeing spirit, seeing seeing thought, seeing things that are higher dimensional. Um, Ashraf, did you go ahead? I was just uh, yeah. in reference to Gary asking, but what's the third eye for? So, you know, I was saying for seeing spirit, seeing truth, things that are high, higher dimensional, and that when we do psychedelics and other things like that, um, our third eye opens up all the way temporarily, and that's what gives us all these crazy hallucinations. Or, you know, that's one possible reason, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you know, we, we only briefly mentioned the third eye within this broadcast, but, yeah, you know, tying it into the third eye kind of being like a portal to the uh, moving through the dimensions. So, I mean, it's very peculiar that, for for reality to kind of be like locked into one so well that it creates this illusion because normally things are like so much more hyperdelic and stuff. Um, just as a little bit of like side inspiration for people who are interested, I watched a documentary today uh, on YouTube, uh, True Hallucinations. It's a Terrence McKenna documentary and it came out um, within the last year, I believe, and it's just what a guy made on YouTube. But it, it really is just an awesome documentary where you just kind of hear a little bit about Terrence McKenna. And he was a very um, 
interesting advocate of altered states of consciousness and talks a lot about like the intelligence of mushrooms and everything. And he does get into sort of revealing it again a lot about the idea that there's more to this reality than meets the eye. But to keep in mind that that information is is sort of parallel to the potentials within the dream space. So um, yeah, we'll get more into that down the road, like the, the the crossovers between how we are learning similar things within the dream space as well as what we're learning within the psychedelic space. And definitely within the psychedelic space, again, you very literally have the opportunity to realize that your thoughts are creating within that moment, uh, especially when you go into like meditations and, and everything. And, and again, you know, it's it's very interesting to notice the common similarities between uh, the psychedelic spaces, the dream spaces uh, as well. So, because, you know, it's, yeah, it's all source looking in on itself in one way or another. Um, just uh, going, uh, reading Gary, he wrote here, he said, one dream taught me how to clear the ether realm of Earth of a, on a global scale. It was like grabbing all red and green energy in the air and shrinking it into nothingness. I practiced it, and the next day totally showed up as an anomaly on, on the human resonance live feed. Like, it really made a difference. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, again, I think it's really interesting to just sort of hear about like how people are uh, using the dream space as an opportunity to help make a difference within this physical reality as well. So, um, G. Rai, did you want to say what you just wrote? Otherwise, I was just going to read your comments, and we'll wrap things up here pretty soon as well. FYI. Um, so, G. Rai wrote, he said, experiences are temporary but understandings are eternal. Know that commitment to the self may not be the most convenient but it will be the most rewarding. Awesome, yeah, definitely. So, uh, something that we've said in the past, when it comes to lucid dreaming, the key, the key that, and this is the key that you can't, like, you can't be given this. You have to create it for yourself. But the key to accessing, like, the higher states of yourself through lucid dreaming and everything related to that is consistency. So consistency is something that you literally have to create it yourself and you can use that as a visualization. You know, you're molding that key uh, through your actions and through your habits. So again, you know, for people listening to this, like I'm going to continue to cultivate my sexual energy uh, as a, as just a, my own personal journey but you know I hope in me doing that for some people it can also be an extra little bit of motivation for you to do it as well knowing that yeah, like what happens once you get past day 21? Theoretically, you can get to the point where you're like having very interesting, potent dreams every night. And again, you can get into the opportunity for us to even start having shared dream experiences. So, yeah. Um, cool. Okay, so again, just opening this up, anybody else have any, um, at this point, we'll say like final thoughts, comments, or practical tips that they want to leave with people listening? And if not, that's totally cool. Cool. So Ashraf, G Ride, Maria, you guys were talking the most. Did you guys? You guys are anything else? I mean, you can just say like it, feed. So we'll just kind of move uh, past that. So feedback on just what you guys thought of the class in general. If you guys want to share anything related to that, how much fun you had and everything. So. Yeah, I think this is good. I think there should be a lot more discussion on dreams. Um, I'd like to, there to be a moment, maybe like a National Dream Day or something, where everyone's just focused <laughs> on dreams. I mean, amazing things will happen because we are, we're very intentional beings. You know, and we put our attention to things that are a lot more liberating than restricting. So, I mean, when you switch attention from the news to actual the real news, which is knowing the self, not the distractions that are out there, I think we could just accelerate our evolution that much quicker. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have to say. So I'm really, really grateful for you, Brandon, for creating a space for people to share, you know, their dreams like this for those interested. And uh, yeah, look forward to participating in more of these. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. And uh, Ashraf, did you want to chime in? Even intention for the future or anything? Yeah, I, I came in late, but what I came for, um, I guess the past couple hours, I guess it's a pretty good time, it was freaking awesome. Uh, like, 
Um, and uh, yeah, this is great. I think it's really important to talk about. And um, to anyone out there who hasn't dreamed yet, like don't lose hope. I really wanted to dream for the longest time, and um, I feel like for me personally, it happens in perfect timing. So like, even if you're trying everything and it's just not working, sometimes um, there's just a, a particular time in your life where it's uh, becomes relevant to do it, and then it just happens without any effort. So I just want to say, you know, don't lose hope. Um, there's a spiritual aspect to this. Sometimes I feel like I, I agreed not to dream until I did certain things in my life so as not to distract me um, from my life, because they can be very, uh, like, you know, distracting. So, like, um, yeah, just to keep that in mind so that people don't lose hope. And there might be spiritual reasons um, behind why we do or don't dream. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a really great point. Uh, definitely something I'd be interested to expand upon in future classes and stuff. But but I, I agree, acknowledging the idea that yeah, like your contract that you created for yourself was the idea that you know, okay, during this part of my life, I'm going to study dreaming, and then and then I'm not going to study dreaming, but I'm going to be really focused on getting shit done in the physical world and, and then once I'm like living in a village out in a the countryside then I'll be able to work on dreaming again or something like that because because it can be totally a challenge you know for that's that's half the that's half the challenge of this is is practicing dreaming within the psychological gymnasium of this modern society of Babylon but again you know like that's part of the hard mode challenge that I think a lot of us uh, are here to embrace that we chose for ourselves is, is to see how much mindfulness can we incorporate how conscious can we become how much of a psychological ninja can we be within the psychological gymnasium so yeah like the the you know like monks back in the day they would go up into the mountain and and stay there and everything like that but now i think it's about like us like coming down from the mountain and bringing it into the city so you know ask other people about their dreams tell them about a dream that you had in maybe a nonchalant way or just you know start planting seeds and, and get people like you can say you know like Encourage someone to write down your dreams. Share a simple practical tip with them. So, so yeah, cool. Um, I was gonna say, uh, Marie, Maria, did you want to share anything before we head out to the listeners? Yeah, I just want to thank you for doing this. This is uh, fascinating. This is amazing. Actually, I'm so I feel so inspired and motivated. And um, the um, the the people who are on here now who are taking dreaming to like this entirely different level of experience, um, it's I'm it's just blown the lid off of uh, what I thought was possible, and um, and it's very synchronistic that uh, that I came on tonight. I I didn't know about your page or this group or anything until uh, like a day or two ago. And uh, my neighbor turned me on to to you, and so this is this is great. I'm just excited to be a part of this. So, oh, 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 my heart is just full. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, now that I remember, someone like tagged you in a post. Um, who, who tagged you, if you don't mind me asking? Cause it was, yeah, it was Rita. That's right. Oh, okay, that's so cool. Well, shout out to Rita as well. She's awesome too, and totally another person who loves talking about dreams and consciousness and stuff. So, yeah, no, Maria, it's really, really great to be able to have you guys. And, and for anybody who's in this broadcast right now, if you guys want to post your Facebook profiles or any other websites into the chat on the side, uh, please feel free to do that now. That helps. And then I'll, I'll, co I'll copy and paste that into the show notes. And again, so for people who are listening to the broadcast, you can connect with the people who are here within this broadcast. And, and FYI, you know, for the people listening... To give you guys a bit of numbers in terms of paradigm shift and where it's growing to, the live broadcast, depending on what it is, may not have a heck of a lot of viewers. A lot of the listeners will actually come through in the recording as well. But uh, this show in itself will be heard by well over 300 people. And so, I mean, th 300 people who at this point are, are invited to take part in a call to action to, again, you know, like what happens when all of us start paying more attention to our dreams and, and doing it not just, you know, doing it for, for all of us as well. So 
I'm really excited to see where we're going to be able to take this class. And again, you know, like I said, we're going to get into concepts of shared dreaming and shared intention. And and yeah, and, and I'm looking forward to being able to share with you more about my dreams and looking forward to hearing more about your dreams as well. And, and especially when we start having like more shared dreams and everything, that can get very... Very exciting. So, um, practical tips. I'll just say as a simple reminder for you guys, uh, your your homework for for this week, I would say, is to uh, get in the habit of writing down your dreams, and theoretically, f if you feel inspired, write a poem or a short story about your dreams. Uh, that was kind of inspired by Maya. She wrote like a little short story, but I think a, a short poem inspired by a dream could be a very interesting thing. Like that could actually be a you know, when you w wake up and you, after you've like sort of like written down your dream once, you can kind of go back and, and I, th I would be curious as to how the process of writing a short poem about a dream would actually uh, develop your recall because it would encourage you to get like creative about your thinking. You know, I'm just thinking if I had to write it, just in reference to what we're talking about, if I were to write a dream about like the uh, the talking monkey or something like that, you know, I'd just try to think of like a haiku I would write or something. Yeah, I'd just be like, monkey, so grateful, me with camera, thoughts and emotions pouring out or something like that, you know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> something along those lines but anyways so again guys uh, encouraging you guys to you know develop the simple practices uh, be mindful of your diet don't eat big meals before going to sleep uh, definitely um, get good sleep try waking up early in the morning and then not eating breakfast and then even taking a nap around a couple hours after you've woken up and done stretching and stuff we didn't talk about too much in this class but that's another practical tip uh, even practicing setting an alarm in the middle of the, new, middle of the night and like waking up in the middle of the night, getting up out of bed, doing a reality check, and then um, going back to sleep or even meditating and going back to sleep or meditating into sleep, uh, practicing meditation in your daily practices. And part of the reason why we practice meditation within our daily practices is because when it goes over to the dream space and we eventually become lucid, uh, that can be a very overwhelming experience in some cases where you'll just be so excited. The mindfulness practice of meditation can be useful for when we do become lucid in a dream where we can just like bring ourselves into our breath and not wake ourselves up accidentally. So, um, cause that can be a common thing where the excitement's like so exciting. So, um, yeah. And then other things would be is, uh, be mindful of cannabis use if that applies to you and, uh, knowing that the less you smoke, the more you'll remember your dreams and it's a toss up and, uh, yeah, definitely just working with that idea. And, uh, the other idea would be the sexual energy and just encouraging you guys to, uh, practice cultivating that. And, you know, if it's, something where even if you just go a week to start off with or maybe even just like a few days of depending on your routine or schedule see see what subtle differences you notice not just within your dream space but also within your waking uh, state through just like the subtle energies of uh, those sexual energies and how they pour out into our everyday life so um, yeah that's pretty much most of what I can think to talk about right now that's kind of the uh, basics of it but there's definitely more to get into um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, does anybody? Does anybody? Because I mean, I talked about a couple things there. Does anybody have any comments based on any of the stuff that I said there? I think G Ride. I saw you kind of shaking your head to a couple things. Or if anybody wanted to jump in, feel free. Okay. By the way, uh, uh, Okay, go ahead. Eating uh, blue cheese or Stilton or any other kinds of cheeses, you can look it up. We'll give you cheese dreams. Cheese dreams are, are really trippy if you eat cheese right before bed. Um, and uh, forget what else I was going to say. <laughs> oh, is there a place where we can go to get notified of these events regularly? Right, right. So, yeah, on the, on the main website paradigmshiftcentral.com when you go up up at the top there's a part where it says to like enter your email to get notified you can do it that way though again those email notifications usually get sent to the spam folder because that's just the way things work like honestly I'll give you guys just a bit of tech behind the news like background information our email list building an email list is a really important thing for projects and a big part of this project our email list has about 750 people on it but when I send out messages based on the information that it tells me it says like literally less than theoretically like four or three or sometimes five percent will actually open and then uh, even less will like theoretically click and stuff like that so definitely um, if you're gonna want to get involved with future events for this the best way is to just go and look at the event schedule online and you'll see that our regular routine is 
Paradigm Shift team building video hangouts every Thursday, and then the Dream class is every other Tuesday, and then the Paradigm Shift Destiny School is uh, in rotation on Thursdays, and it's every three weeks, and then there's the Paradigm Shift admin hangouts, which are also in rotation on Thursdays. So if you go to the main website and go up to Tools and then Event Calendar, you can find it through there, or just on most of the website, you'll see it in the side panel or even on the main landing screen. So yeah, just kind of or in, and also just connect to me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Skull Babylon because you'll definitely see me posting about it through there as well on a regular basis. So there's a few ways to get notified, but definitely just being aware of the routine is uh, the easiest one. So yeah, and I think, again, that's the exciting thing about this class, that's the exciting thing about this project is having the consistency of the routine. And this is, again, just like our first week back. So I'm really looking forward to being able to see how the routine uh, enables us to develop on our own uh, journeys within our own practices and the stories that we'll be able to share as community. So yeah. Um, cool. OK, guys. Uh, let's literally just finish with a short three to four breath meditation. Um, but before we do that, I was just going to say, uh, within this episode on the website, you'll see the image that I have up of the the tree in the middle of the field. And so I kind of want you guys, again, I mentioned this earlier, to open up to the idea that let's see if we can meet up within the dream space at the tree in the field. So this is a very simple concept, but I want you to be able to like imagine the tree in whatever way you want to imagine it in. And then within that vision, there's also the idea that the paradigm shift sigil, the symbol, the logo for the project, uh, which is like kind of this as above, so below beacon, like kind of looks like a like a compass kind of thing, and it's also a portal. You can imagine that floating above the tree. So by imagining, it's not just the tree, but by actually imagining the paradigm shift sigil, part of the concept behind this, and this has been in, in, in the background for years, is that by imagining the sigil within our dream space, we can actually use that as a beacon to connect. So it's a, it's a portal for us to be able to play with and connect through. So, so if you imagine the sigil, then you can imagine the dream of the tree being there in the field and then bring this into your meditation. You can even do like a mindfulness meditation of just kind of imagining yourself there within your meditation and then walking up to the tree and seeing who's there at the tree and imagine yourself talking to people. And then when you're falling asleep, you can practice visualizing this. So I'll do it and we'll see, but we'll, we'll talk more about it We'll see what happens, and, and yeah, we'll talk more about it in future weeks uh, just in relation to how we can work together at achieving shared dream experiences within the concept of us literally being able to meet up within the shared space of the dream to, to talk more, to co-create more, to go on adventures more, and to do it consciously and to actually have recall. Like, theoretically, this show is setting up for the point where in the future, on episode, you know, however many from now that will wake up and, and will literally be, there will be more than one person who will have a visceral account of something that was a shared experience within the dream space. And that is a very exciting thing because I feel that hasn't fully been, uh, that, ha that isn't something that we see documented very commonly within this human experience. So uh, it's just something to be able to work towards and it will happen with, you know, just moving forward without expectations but with intentions. I think that's the important thing with dreams. And then, you know, and just kind of a final thing to go out on. With dreams, do that. Like, when you go into dreams, let go of expectations. That's like a very important thing and understand kind of even what Ashraf was saying that there's almost like a, another part to the universe that's kind of choosing when certain dreams come through. So really honor that and know that like that one lucid dream that might be your first lucid dream will come through at the right time. And again, you just have to, at the very least, tell the universe that you are open to receiving. So you kind of do it. You say like, I am open yet I have no expectations. And, you know, even some people who may be practicing mindfulness and everything, they may still have a dream, they may still go nights where they just don't remember their dreams. And to honor those too. But then, you know, the next day they might fully remember their dreams. So uh, it's a very interesting process. And I think, you know, it's, it's bigger than just us. I'll say that. So but we're a part of something bigger is basically the way how it's to look at it. So, yeah, dreams are... Uh, a portal and a gateway into understanding more of our multidimensional nature within this reality. So, 
entering into <laughs> some very exciting territory here. Cool. Okay, guys. Um, let's just take that closing breath meditation. So we're just encouraging guys to like sit up straight. And with this, you can visualize in your own mind the tree in the field. So you can kind of just imagine yourself off in the distance and slowly imagine yourself walking towards the tree in the field. And again, imagine the tree in whatever way. And, and if you can add in the sigil, imagine the sigil above the tree in whatever way that works and makes sense for you. So let's just connect with the breath. So together, gentle inhales. And gentle exhales. And we'll do a few breaths here. So continue breathing. Inhales. And exhales. And as we take a few moments here, let's just collectively add intention and visualization energy to this image of the tree in the field with the sigil above it. So you can almost think that the more we collectively think about it, the more we actually begin to build it. It actually begins to manifest. And it begins within our imagination. But our collective imaginations can maintain its form. If just one of us was thinking of on it on its own, you can almost imagine that it wouldn't have that same solidity now it's like multiple aspects of us tuning into a shared frequency, a shared vision. So again, just take a few breaths, gentle inhales, and imagine a tree in the field. But you can begin to bring in visualizations of even energy around the tree. Perhaps even the sky looks different. Begin to make things magical within your imagination as you slowly begin to walk towards the tree, but not reaching it yet. So continue to breathe. Imagine your environment with as much richness, as much detail, even imagining the air, feeling the ground underneath you as you walk through the field, feeling the texture of things, knowing that the tree that you're imagining has a texture of itself. And there will be a point where you'll be right up to it and touching it. But at this point, simply imagine yourself walking towards it. You are not at the tree just yet. But we will get there together. In this dream or another. So continue to breathe. So a few more breaths here. So you can almost imagine a portal, a vortex of energy that the tree itself is. Even imagining the paradigm shift sigil pulsating. Sending out a signal in both receiving the energy that we are putting into it. A beacon for all the dreamers. So right now, just even verbalize or think to yourself, restate your intention to go to the tree, to find the tree within your dreams, to become lucid within your dream, and to even bring yourself to that tree. And we'll get more into this later, but even leaving something at a tree, turning the tree into a communal space, a shared space, an altar for our shared intentions. So a few more inhales. 
exhales, relaxation, calmness, focus, intention. Through meditation, we learn to focus our minds. We learn to focus our ability to manifest. Hundreds of thoughts, hundreds of minds focus not just towards the thought of a, t of a tree, but also the symbolism of what the tree represents, of love, unity, and compassion for all of those within this bigger dream. So before we leave this meditation, carry forward with you the intention of continuing this meditation even as you're falling asleep before you go to sleep. Take a moment to visualize yourself walking to the tree and maybe you can go right up to it at your own free will later on within your own meditations. And do this as a meditation to access a shared communal space. And to do it with the intention of returning there within the astral realms. Good. Let's take a few more breaths at your own pace. Slowly bring your awareness back to your physical body. Slowly wiggle your fingers, your toes. And gently open your eyes. Return your awareness to the room around you, or wherever you are. <clears throat> cool. Awesome. Well, thanks again, guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this, for all of you in the broadcast, and for everyone listening to this in the future. Uh, this is, uh, again, you know, you can think of it as an experiment. You can think of it as a shared group activity. Definitely, we're doing something. So, it's making a difference. Cool, guys. All right. Um, th uh, honestly, just opening up the mic, did anybody have any thoughts or comments they just wanted to, if they feel called to share, like related to the tree idea or even just anything within that meditation? that they might feel they want to share. Feel free to keep it to yourself and we'll let the listeners interpret how they choose. Cool. Okay, so it sounds like it's okay. All right, well, that's awesome and we'll move into the conclusion of this broadcast and thanking everyone so much for tuning into this. A uh, little side note, you know, if you're interested in lucid dreaming and you haven't yet, please feel free to explore the website and check out the Shift movies. And in particular, you can go back and watch the Journey to Lucidity movie saga, which is the movie saga that I've directed and put online. And those, of course, are about transformational festivals, but also about the topic of lucid dreaming. And they have some more practical tips in there and will be sure to inspire your spirit. And uh, just before we were about to finish this broadcast, it looks like uh, another new player has joined the game, and Bianca is in here, and Bianca has actually been in here in the past. So, of course, we'll say hello to Bianca. So, hi, Bianca. You made it just in time. So, uh, feel free to say hello if you want to just uh, add in any last thoughts about dreams or maybe why dreams are awesome and people should be interested. So, feel free to go ahead before we wrap up. Now I'm just saying hi, hello, and <laughs> Dreams, I don't really remember any of them. <laughs> Not yet. But hi, everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Well, <laughs> cool. Again, you know, I'm honestly, like, I get... I get excited about the uh, about people who, who may not be remembering their dreams as much because, again, that gives us more space to notice room for uh, ongoing unfoldment and everything. So, And I'm kind of in that same boat. I, I'm honestly, like, right now, again, just with, like, where I'm at, personal habits and everything like that, I'm not fully remembering my dreams every night, but I know what I need to do to change that. And so I'm going to do what I need to do, and, uh, yeah, I look forward to being able to hear more about how uh, 
through through those little shifts and through those little changes in habits and inconsistency and, and patterns and all the little things, reality checks and meditation and dreaming and diet and energy cultivation and cannabis and all those little things that add together that will make a difference. So yeah, encouraging you guys to do what you need to do within your dream practice. Cool. Okay, so um, Ashraf, go ahead. By Just all means. That quick thing, I had a hard time finding it. So if people want to get automatically notified and they have like a calendar or a Google calendar, you can go to live.paradigmshiftcentral.com slash calendar and there's like an auto update in Google Calendar and uh, I know that there's a way to like get those events to appear on your own calendar and it'll automatically uh, notify you. And then there's one more place on Facebook, it's called um, uh, Paradigm Shift Central Live Net. Uh, so if you Google that and then type in Facebook, it'll take you to apparently this Facebook page that automatically also puts out <laughs> little Facebook notifications. So yep, just so people know. For sure, awesome. Yeah, and and that is a uh, definitely worth bringing up again because honestly, like with the social media thing, because of Facebook things and because of again what I mentioned with the email list, like not actually getting into people's primary mailbox, it is it is a very challenging thing sometimes to let people know about the notifications for the broadcast. So definitely, just once you familiarize yourself with the routine and the schedule for the Paradigm Shift Central community, you'll be able to find them that way. But always know that all the recorded all the broadcasts are recorded. So even if you miss a live broadcast, just go to the main website, explore it, and you'll see through the heads-up display, the menu up at the top, you'll see the feeds and that will have also the uh, the central news, which is where you'll find the hangouts and the classes, the quest journals, which you'll find content from community members, including dream journals, conscious articles, which are specific conscious and shifting content that we'll be working more on in the future as well, and of course the podcast feed, and that's where you'll be able to find recordings for this episode and others. So I mean, go back, check out past episodes, and if they're new to you, then yeah, enjoy. And of course, uh, yeah, just reminding you guys, thanking you so much for for supporting this project and reminding you guys to help us reach our next goal with the team crowdfunding, and that's through the Patreon, and you can find that at patreon.com forward slash Brendan Culleton or through the main website under the part where it talks about joining the monthly support squad or where it says the shift buttons. It'll, either one will link you into that, and uh, yeah, $5 a month will get you the full shifter booster kit, and that comes with as many shift buttons as you want, and you can find out more info there. And, uh, just as heads up, I'll be making a lot of shift buttons and sending those out to all the supporters. So thank you so much to all the monthly supporters for helping make this possible. And I look forward to giving you guys more updates in the next team building video hangout. And again, the team building video hangouts will be a little bit different from the dream class. Uh, they'll be talking less specifically about dreams and more about all sorts of other awesome things that we're creating, working on, and doing in our local communities to help shift the paradigms where we are. So think about creating a paradigm shift community where you are that's always the thing that we want to be able to encourage people. Use the quest journals on the website. Use them as a place to talk about your dreams. Simply by having that tool there through the website, it can be a good uh, motivation to get you into sharing your dreams as well. So looking forward to that. And again, for anybody who is in this broadcast, you'll be able to connect with them online through the show notes and the information there. And please share this show with your friends. Let them know. Be involved. And remember that the shift is us. So with that said, guys, I'll get you in uh, just joining and saying farewell to everyone on the Internet, and we'll wrap this broadcast up. So if you guys want to unmute your microphone, you can join me in saying farewell to all the fellow dreamers out there. And uh, we'll see you guys at the tree in the dream space. So until next time, guys, we'll see you guys. See you guys in the future. I know you guys yeah. I mean, Later. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, so keep it shifty. And, uh, yeah, remember, you're always going to be dreaming. It's just a matter of whether or not you're awake. So we'll see you in the future, guys. All right, one love. Thanks for listening. Peace.